Oh man, we live, baby, we live. We lit, baby, we lit. What's good, family tree? Let me know if you're up in the building with me. Today's show is, is the comedic religion dead? That's the question right there. Is the comedic religion dead? Let me just make sure that everybody's here with me. Uh, drop me a little like, a little comment inside the comment section. Let's have a little bit of, you know, participation. And of course, I shall be sending the link um, into the stream a little bit later on. Yeah. But yeah, this is just a quick, a quick, a quick, 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 quick one. We are going to do a show a little bit later on. Um, the show... Yeah, it's going to be a show later on. Hopefully it's around 7 p.m. I can't even tell you the title of the show right now. But yeah, it's going to be a show a little bit later on, um, 7 p.m. And we're going to get it in. Ah, So let's quickly just go through some of these comments here. <clears throat> uh, you know, the Hulk says, yes, the religion is dead. Uh, the religion died thousands of years ago. Literally, it's a historical fact. No cap. Um, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say for that. Um, I, I would have to say, honestly, that is a form of ignorance, meaning most people don't actually know. Um, I, I need to actually break down what the religion is and, and so forth, but most people don't know that the comedic uh, way of life never actually died out, you know, the thousands of years ago that people think it did. You dig? You know, most people think that, you know, via Persian rule, uh, you know, the Greek rule, the Ptolemaic rule, the Roman rule, we're going back 200 uh, BC and so forth to, two, to AD, 0 AD, 1 AD, so forth, yeah, that it died out. No, it, it actually did not die out. Uh, full stop. It's just that another group of people actually invaded the land and took control and had power over the land. And actually, they continued the legacy of uh, the Kemetic uh, philosophy and practices. Okay, it was not until like roughly the fifth century where you know the christians <laughs> the christians now started to persecute and close down the temples within inside of uh, egypt um but yeah it was pretty much so alive for quite some time afterwards um you know i tell you what there's a good book that i, I do implore that everybody should actually get um this one right here let's see do, 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 do. Is it not showing? There you go. Egyptology, Egyptology, the missing millennium, ancient Egypt and medieval Arabic writing. There you go. That's a good one. You know, there, there is stuff in here that's showing you that, you know, all throughout the 900 AD, uh, 13th century and so forth, that the comedic uh, philosophy and practices was very much so still alive. Uh, in fact, you can go into the Arabic writings. Uh, this is a time when the Muslims slash Arabs invaded Egypt. And they will tell you stories of the priests uh, that were still there doing their thing, okay? So it didn't actually die out. Uh, I was gonna look in here for the, the, the sources for it, but yeah, this is a good book to see. Um, and what you'll find that a, mo a much of the comedic uh, philosophy and practices uh, because of its persecution in Christianity and Islam, um, it simply uh, went into hiding and it simply uh, subsumed and absorbed influenced um, those particular religions and those particular religions kept uh, the comedic philosophy and practices uh, sacred in their own orders uh, and they continued it you know and they continued it and most of uh, the stuff that went through medieval times you know was to be honest with you thankfully to the christians and the muslims during those eras who actually saw the value in this and actually kept it sacred and had it in their orders and then reproduced those works and translated those works. Um, and that actually affected Europe, actually, actually brought about a renaissance with inside of Europe. But that's a story for another day. So, um, you know, comedic philosophy and uh, practices never really died out, you know, it never really died out. It just transformed and changed. Uh, let me just quickly read through um, some more of this uh okay what we have doo -doo -doo -doo, what we have today in 2022 is a small minority group with a blackwashed feel good spook doctrine labeled as comedic science okay you have to yeah i, mean, I have to invite you on here you know i have to invite you on here to see the religion of the ancient egyptians the theopians are Eritrean, Somalis, and Sudanese. okay okay cool um they got regards from the gin and tonic show salute 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 gin and tonic show you know um 
do, 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 do. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Uh, as I said, dead like the dodo, me, me Jenna. Dead like the dodo, the dodo. Jeez. My last saw M. Carl said, it can never die. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Man. Um, so we're gonna get, we're actually gonna get into it in a hot second, right? We're gonna get into it. Um, but I just want to put it out there, like it has never truly died out. Never truly died out. There's always been small remnants of, um, you know, people that practice or uphold the philosophy. Either they uphold the philosophy or they practice it, or they practice it, but they don't uphold the philosophy, or they do both. Like it's, it's, it's a mad one, it's a mad one, because on this channel particularly, you know, we talk about comedic philosophy quite a bit, all right? We talk about comedic philosophy, but we really go into what is classified as the religion or the cultic aspect of comedic philosophy, all right? I, I generally tend to stay away from, from that. But I'm like, well, oh, for real, you know, we don't actually do it. And this is what's causing it in this new era, this new um, cycle, for it to not be as prominent as it should be. What do I mean by that? <clears throat> if we look at the, <clears throat> the, um, let's see, who, who, who can we, who can, yeah, let's do the Hebrew Israelites, because we've got Ezra out here, yeah? Ezra, yeah? Blah, blah, blah. Man, Ezra. So Hebrew Israelites, like, come on, look at that. Look at that. Um, Hebrew Israelites, you know, that, that is a, uh, that is a social, political, religious society, right? That has continued on, you know, or you could say religious. Let me just put religious in brackets because, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a tricky one. Like they've continued or, you know, where it has stopped for a, a certain period of time, they revived it in America, and it's now spreading across uh, the UK and Europe and other places. Look at that, because they're very vibrant. They're keeping their stuff alive. But I'm going to have to charge the comedic, um, you know, philosophers, philosophers and practitioners. They're not really keeping it alive, you know. They're not really doing it. Like I'm one of those as well, you know. Like, I have to look at myself in the mirror and be like, yo, girl, I know you love comedic philosophy, but you don't actually keep it alive like that. More time, we're on this channel, and we're just talking a bunch of BS. Like, we're talking all this religious stuff. Like, that's what you guys like, right? You're like, Islam and that, right? The fighting Muslimics, you know? You want to talk about Muslimic stuffs and Christian stuffs. But, like, we really get to talk about Kemet like we used to talk about Kemet. So I'm gonna have to say I need to start uh, putting up myself on that one. Um, let me quickly make sure I get this link. I know a man like a size is gonna he's gonna jump in. I know he wants to jump in. Um, let me just make sure, like I said this before, I could keep on talking. Um, Jeez, uh, Banksy's up in the building. I kind of hope you and the family are well. Jeez, all uh, right. Um, not sure. Okay, hotel is not sure what you're referring to, but aren't just to them nonetheless. Love, lots of Africans picking and choosing random things from religion scholars made up their research to see. Um, Callum, I'm in Mitchell next week. Link up, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm about it, I'm about it. Um, yeah, 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 and that was another thing. I was listening to a program, um, yesterday, like from somebody. Um, you know, who claims to be comedic. And I'm like, what the fudge is this? Like, what the fudge is this? What the fudge is this? And I see it as like a new age thing. Like, all what he was talking was some new age nonsense. Yeah, like, yeah, you won't be judged. That is a Christian concept. Like, you know, you could, um, you know, drug dealers, like, depending on certain things, they will face consequences, but they won't be judged and it won't affect their, like talking like karma and stuff like this. And I was like, the hell are you, I, that big man. I, I, you know when you're going to tap man in their chest like, hey, yo, big man, what are you talking from? What are you talking from? Because sometimes I feel like treating comedics, you know, like I treat religious folks. Hey, yo, big man, source me that. Show me where in the Quran it says that. Hey, yo, no, 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 no. You said what? What in the Bible? No, 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 no. Call me, call King James Version. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring that verse up, fam. Go on, let me hear what you say. Now, which scholars agree with you on that? And so forth. That's how I feel like treating some comedic people, you know, at times, yeah, because I'm like, where are you getting this stuff from? 
Like, where indeed are you getting this stuff from? Because it doesn't look like as though you read the, the, the comedic, um, you know, language, the hieroglyphs and so forth. So you can't possibly be getting it from that, right? And some of us are blessed to be able to read it, right? Like man, like Asar M. Carr, you've got the Magi, um, Smash Rockwell, Jonathan Owens, you've got, you know, Asar, the others, Asar, um, Asar M. Hotep, you've got Wajawu, you've got man, like Reggie, you got a few of the brothers out there who do their thing, right? And so I know, isn't it? Like, and, and then, but I'm listening to other folks who don't actually like read and learn the language. I'm like, so where are you getting your stuff from? And then to make it worse, like, I'm like, okay, I'm a person who reads, isn't it? Like, I devour books for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so which scholars are you getting this information from? Because I can't see it within any type of Egyptological work or chemitological work. I can't see it there. I don't know where you are getting this information from. Like, this just sounds like a, 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 a mix up of some new age nonsense. That's me personally, you know, like, uh -huh. so I feel as though, yeah. I need to start attacking my comedic folks. I need to start doing it because I can't really hear nothing that's, that's, that's tangible coming out of, of certain people's mouths. All right, let me quickly read this. Unknown, if I want to start something, somewhat, start somewhere authentic with learning comedicism, where do, I, where do I go? Everything seems vastly different between scholars and to be honest, it's very confusing. You know, it is, it is very, it is. I'll, I'll be real with you, I'll be the first one to say it because I was looking online, yeah, to be like, okay, I miss comedic information. I really do. I really miss it. And I'm thinking I was listening to something the other day, like one of the scholars was speaking, you know, in terms of being an Egyptologist, you know, where, you know, he says, where did you start? Like, how did you start? How did you get into this? Right. And he says, oh, yeah, like, you know, from the age of like, you know, 10 or 12 years old, you know, um, I started with my introductory book of hieroglyphs, like learning the hieroglyphic language. I stepped back for a second and I was like, right, 12 years old, yeah? My son is a big boy now. And I'm looking at myself, yeah, because obviously back then he wasn't of age, but he's a big boy now. And I think to myself, hold on, I've been slipping. When he was a you, yeah, I did. But as he's grown older, I have not even taught him, yeah, the comedic, the comedic uh, script, the comedic language you know, the easy uh, learning how to read books and so forth. I'm like, yo fam, you are slipping on the road sites. You know, you are slipping. Like certain things as the daily rituals and practices, like the hymns and so forth, which is kind of like, you know, how can I put it? It closely resembles the Salat of the Muslims. And I'm like, fam, uh... You don't even do that with, with my man no more. Like all these, you know, Egyptologists, Germans and so forth, they're doing this with their children from a young age, yeah? But you are where? I was like, oh, for real, you know? And I was like, hold on, back in the day, yeah, we used to have a good, strong, you know, committed community. Where is the committed community now? Like, I don't even know too tough. And that's me on my bad. I've got to be, I've got to say that's me. The Muslims, they are around, but... Sometimes I can't stand conscious folks, and they're like, I don't, I, don't, I just can't stand conscious folks. I, I, I like being in the dunya. So yeah, man, I, I just had to reflect on myself. I had to do some quick reflections. Cheeks, Tendai Mwari. Hey, listen, Shaka, Shaka Ra. Listen, yeah, I was on your Instagram, and when I saw them old school um, videos there, what is urban? Who is urban? Are you urban? I'm not urban. And yo, this is bringing me back, yeah? I want to say 20 years, yeah, but I don't think it's been that long for me. I will say it has it brought me back like 15 years. I was like, wow, this is old school. This is stuff that I grew up on, yeah? Shaka, yeah? I've got to salute you because uh, when you bring back them old school things, yeah, these, 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 these videos, yeah, these lyrics, yeah, this is the stuff that I grew, I thought as well I grew up on. That was that was my um, my 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 Jay Z uh, Pat Kanaz like you get me the the Shakaras and and um and what's their poets and the Flowetries and Amun Ra's and Sugar what's the whole thing called again ah why am I forgetting it right now but salute anyway salute 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 anyways 
back to it, 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 back to it. Um, yeah, man. So I'm realizing that we need to like as comedics, yeah, we need to actually step up the game, right? Step up the game because cheese, man. Like Buddha Bing's up in the building as well. Car, you know, I I feel as though I'm slipping. And the reason why I feel as though I'm slipping when it comes to comedicism, okay, is that the people I'm surrounded by are not doing what they should be doing. Or they're not positively impacting me. And I need to stop talking all this BS um, religious stuff, yeah, at times, yeah. Because I'm not a speaker's corner where I need to be debating and knowing this stuff. Like, this stuff is redundant. BS to me, personally. Like, I should be on my grind, fam. I should be on my full comedic philosophy grind. That's what I feel as though I should be doing. You dig? Because there ain't nothing quite as good as comedic philosophy, to be honest with you. Greek philosophy comes close, though. Greek philosophy comes a close second, personally. I've got a love for Greek philosophy. I do, I do, I must say. But apart from that, no. Nah, let's get back into it. So, anyways, let me go in, let me go in, let me go in now. Like, let's properly start this show. Young, 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 Cali, baby. Oh, man. Let's get it. So, anyways, let me share my screen. Let's do this, yo. Yeah? Let's do this. Because I'm talking some talks about comedic. Oh, let me see. Yeah, I'm talking some talks about comedic philosophy. Sorry, comedic religion, right? Here we go. I'm talking some talks about comedic religion. Boom. Cool. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, this is going to take long. I forgot about Okay, no, it's going fast. It's going fast. It's going fast. It's going fast. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. And I'm realizing, yeah, before, before any of my... um. You know, real comedics here come onto the panel, yeah. Or real comedics here jump on in, yeah, inside the comment section. And I'm like, Kyle, what type of rubbish are you talking from? Comedics, we don't do, we don't deal with religion out here, fam. What are you talking about, yeah? Source that, fam. And I'd be like, you know what? You're right, you know. <laughs> like, when we come to uh, comedic philosophy um, or, or comedic religion or comedic uh, sciences or the practices, there is no such thing as religion. Like, there is literally no word in comedy for religion. All right. So I'm going to just draw for one of my, um, you know, I love this. I love this particular scholar. Right. Um, this is Yen Esman. He's coming from the search for God. Actually, let me pull this up so you so see. OK. The search for God in ancient Egypt. There you go. There you go. The search for God in ancient Egypt. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. So in here, yeah, I'm quoting him. Yeah. So like, you know, as we do, because I, I realized, you know, like I do this all day long with the Muslims, you know, and everybody else, but like, why we're we not doing it for comedic stuff, right? So let's let's go. It says here the ancient Egyptian language has no word for religion. All right. So yeah, again, well, the title of this show is a clear misnomer. Yeah, yeah, because you know how we like to do, mate. We like to do some controversy out here. Yeah. So there's no such thing as religion in comedy. No such thing as religion, right? And this is why I love it. This, this is what I love with. You don't get caught up in spookism. You don't get caught up in beliefs. You're not going to fight each over, fight each other over who's right, who's wrong, who's going to heaven, who's going to hell, who's following the right way or the wrong way. There's nothing like that, right? Because there's no such thing as religion, okay? There's no such thing as religion, all right? And, you know, the whole kid now says, that's a lie. Says here, that's a lie. Let me just make sure. That's a lie. Yeah, that's a lie. Okay. All right, cool. I don't mind it being a lie to you, you know. But if you say it's a lie, you know, like you know, you know, you know, you know what we do over here. If you are truthful, this, this, this is this is the Titans TV mantra. So if you are truthful, then provide your evidence, mate. Provide your evidence that there is no such thing as religion in Kemet, right? These are the scholars. They tell you there is no word for religion in Kemet, and you know if you wanted to prove me wrong which is not even me i'm just caught in the scholar this is why i love it isn't it like you hide behind scholars mate yeah scholar gang 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 gang, gang. right you hide behind scholars you hide behind uh your evidence your source and your proof okay if somebody says there yeah, there is a there is a word for uh religion in chemic i'll be like All right, cool do you know how you disprove me do you know how you prove yourself right and me wrong or the scholars wrong 
is by literally just opening up an Egyptian grammar book or an Egyptian, uh, what's it called, lexicon, dictionary, right? Just open it up and see where is religion. Like, show me the word for religion, all right? And there isn't any, okay? But we'll go into it a little bit deeper. Let me just quickly see. Okay, a way of life. <laughs> yeah, cool. Cheers, man, like Cosmic Sankofa. Remember, yeah, the link is inside of the um, chat section, right? So you can come on in anytime you like, yeah? You can challenge, you can come in and support, you can do whatever you need to do, yeah? Um, okay, cool. So anyways, yeah, so in Kemet, there's no such thing as religion, okay? But, yeah, the closest thing to what religion is to the comedic mind and the comedic practitioner, I will go into that, okay? So bear with me, right? So there's no such word as religion in Kemet, right? And there's no such understanding as religion in Kemet. But that which is sacred or that which, you know, is viewed as religion by the outside world, how we as comedic uh, practitioners and philosophers, how we understand that, and I'm talking about ancients understand it and how we gain our understanding of it, I will now go into, okay? Because it's quite simple. The, what, what you guys will call religion is what we call ma'at, yeah? Chai, Mala Asa M. Car, the nature, my saber, my brother is in the building. Peace to you, God. ETE Emhatap Shani Ankwas the Jet Ank Uja Seneb. Do I do I Hindu? That's the chat, that's the family. Do I do I saber Kalam Ankwas the Jet? The young him that the young him nature. In the building, breaking it down. All right, go ahead, my brother. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. You see what I'm saying? All right, okay, okay, okay. I lied. I lied when I said, yeah, I don't, I'm not even seeing my committed people doing what they need to be doing. I swear, Asa M. Kaya has to be one of those people, yeah, that I lied on. I lied on because he does it. Because you see how he came on? You see how he came on and just hyped up the whole show by just, just quoting lyrics, Yeah. From the comedic um rap sheets right there. I just love it. Like that, that gives me life. I need to sleep to a saw more often. But anyways, let me get into this. Let me get into this. Right? So let me just go over here. So what we classify as, you know, what you would classify as religion, but we don't have it. But you know, the closest thing is something called Ma'at. And let me see. Ah, this thing is taking too long. But yeah. Let's quickly go into it. All right. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So I'm just calling straight, straight, straight scholars. It says here, I believe, I believe, no, 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 he's, you know, he's German, but he speaks English. All right, cool. Let me, let me see. I believe we can get a grip on the problem if we distinguish the two concepts of religion, a wider and a narrow one. I shall explain this distinction with the help of an Egyptian text that outlines the role of the king in the world and in the process describes in a general manner what the Egyptians understood by religion okay now so this is the text like let's, let's quote the text it says here ray has placed the king in the land of the living forever and ever judging humankind and satisfying the gods realizing that and destroying is fed. he the king gives offerings to the gods and mortuary offerings to the deceased okay that right there okay would be our concept yeah of what is classified as religion, although it's not religion, right? And the most fundamental thing right there is realizing Ma'at and destroying Isfet. That is the whole, um, that is the whole, you know, <laughs> you know that's quoted from Alistair Crowley, you know, that is the whole of the law. Um, yeah, that is everything, you know, that is literally it, to realize Ma'at and destroy Isfet. If one fully understood and comprehend that, yeah, there'd be nothing else. You, I don't even have to say anything more, you know. That is literally what it's about. The whole culture of Kemet is about realizing Ma'at, establishing Ma'at, raising Ma'at, putting Ma'at in its rightful place, right? Truth, justice, honesty. Sorry, truth, justice, reciprocity. Reciprocity. Balance. 
yeah, let's get it, baby. No. <laughs> what a duck. You know? That's what it's about. And in the way of doing that, in the way of shining that light, right? You know what can't actually, um, you know, you know, be in the same place as uh, truth, falsehood. So therefore, we not only have a constructive power as comedics, we have a destructive power. We're there to actually destroy, annihilate, and completely abominate, uh, respect, chaos, disorder, evil, and so forth and so forth and so forth. That is it. That is literally the basis of it, right? But the king has the rule, has the power, sorry, has the responsibility. And not only the king, mind you, not only the king, right? Because every single commission, okay, is born of the sun or born of Ra. And it's also their duty, right? To, what's that? You know, bring harmony to mankind, to bring truth and justice to mankind, to judge mankind, to keep a balancement amongst each other. It's also, we have the, uh, you know, the duty of honoring, revering, respecting, praising, worshiping the divine principles known as the nature or the nature rule or, you know, English terms, gods, and as well as mortuary offerings to the deceased. Meaning again, is keeping alive the ancestors, the uh, transfigured ancestors, the affected ones, those who are judged true of voice true of actions and true of reasoning all right this is just the basics of it that's the basis of it all right let me just make sure i haven't really missed anything and i want to ask Asar to just chime in if you wanted to add something extra right now brother kalam is on point um <clears throat> we'll just kind of gloss over when he says that we get rid of isfet there's a there's a, a verse in the it's around the litany of ra when he's Ra is talking to a particular king. Remember, we call the king, we call him the little nature or the good nature because we consider him to be the tongue of God on earth. No different than your president. No different than when Shaka Zulu told you, he said, he asked, he asked the, uh, the, the Europeans who were over there, you can see it on the movie. He said, can your king send you to die in a war? And the guy answered, no, Jesus is our God and Jesus is blah, 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 blah. And he said, if your president sends you to war, will you go? Yes, Ibana. <laughs> if your president sends you to war and you die in the war, did he send you to die? Yes, Ibana. So then your king is who runs things and he is who runs you. And as Shaka, I run this country, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the first part, right? We get rid of Isfet. We look at the king as the word the of Netra when it comes out of his mouth. And if he doesn't do right by Netra, you'll find times where the people step against him, right? So we, we know that we have checks and balances in ancient Kemet. Um, and you are a limb of Ra, as it tells you in that verse in the litany of Ra. It says, you are a limb of Ra. Go forth, spread this, that, the other. And then it tells us, hack up my limbs that have turned against me. So just like you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like you think Yahweh is the ruler, so controller of everything and anything has been created, we think the same thing about Amin Ra. And it says it in the verses. And if you go to the 75 praises of Ra, it starts to let you know that. Go ahead, brother. Oh, my God. Goodness, why? You know what? Yeah, let me just do this actually. In the tap, Ezra. <laughs> you see what my brother's talking about? Yeah, man. Big up yourselves, man. Big up. This book right here, you can find that. Jeez, Ezra, what are you saying to me, God? Let's go ahead and kill a cow. You <laughs> You're good. There you are. There you are. Hey. Yeah, man. You say, you, 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 know? you, you come yeah, in with the smoke. I saw you. What's the, what's, what's the comment say? Let me see what you say. What you saying? Nah, nah, I'm not. There's not. I'm not smoking now. I'm not smoking today, bro. I'm chilling, yeah. I just I listen me and listen still. Yeah, but yeah man. Good Hold to see you doing your thing, me... thing man. Right. Educate the people, yeah. them, man. Teach them. Teach yeah. them. Love my brother. Love my brother. Let me let me let me let me, let me say this thing. Says man. Yeah, man. Says, got no, Asar. Asar. We're going to Sam. Yes, sir. Ezra here says, "Nah, you're." 
teaching. I'm sure we've been arguing for years. Sorry, good, yeah? Yes, sir. <laughs> Shalom, shalom, brother Ezra. Shalom, that's my brother Ezra. You know? <laughs> yeah, man. Shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom, good to be here, is man. Yeah, keep it up. <laughs> Shout out to the I... mess. Chemist dying, that's man. You two, I feel like you two, the last, you two, the last hopes. <laughs> it's the last hope for America, and Callum is the last hope for UK. After you two, chemist finished, bro. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Ezra funny, and you know bro. what yeah Ezra is funny but if I really deep that and reflect upon it I'm scared he might even be true <laughs> I'm even scared it's I'm deep even scared it. of the truth of that it's deep bro it's deep yeah. just deep <laughs> let's 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 also gloss over a couple other things Kalam said. Kalam said people of the sun. But yeah, I'm going on mute. Yeah, I'm just listening from him and new, right? He he yeah. said the people of the sun, that's in the text, right? He said there is no word for religion. What we do, we call it shimsu. We call it shimsu. The word shimsu means to follow. What are we following? You can be a shimsu with sar. A Shemsu Haru, a Shemsu Set, which was usually dedicated to the foreigners. But let's not forget, in its original format, it represents the Nehesi. That's why when you look in the language of the Medu Necha, you see Nehesi is also called Seti. Why are they call Seti? Because they're the original worshippers of Set. But when the foreigner got a hold of it and started to do funny stuff, we started to call them the followers of Set, right? And we don't slide the Nehesi, who you call Nubians, because remember in the prayer before it starts, before you get to Dihetep, Nesu, Necheru, Necha'a, before you get to that, you have to say something to open the doors. And you have to give praise to Deduin, who was a Necheru of the Nehesi. And we call him the child, don't we? Before you slide the boat back of the baboon. Before you do all of that, we have to give praise to Deduin. So you got to do your real homework. We're not, we don't have a religion. We shimsu. We follow the culture of our people. We follow the culture of our ancestors. Asar is considered to be the ancestor. So we follow, I follow Asar. And then other people follow Heru. At the time, we were called the King Heru. So you will be a Shimsu Haru or a Shimsu Asar, depending on your priesthood and depending on what clan you came from. That's why you have the Shimsu Asar amongst the, well, you have the Ilasar clan amongst the Maasai people who are made up of the Somali and the Maasai who had a war at a time, but came together later. You also have the Shim, you have Shim, you have uh, the, uh, the, um, the Ilaset clan amongst the Kalenjin people. But if you did your homework and knew your African cultures, you would know that. You will also find a Heru cult amongst the who? The Twa, the Khoi. When you look in Kasut, the, the country that they settled in ancient Kemet, if you did your homework, you would really know some of this stuff, but you ain't do your homework yet. There you go. There you go. Let me, get, let me get Cosmic in the building. Cosmic, and go for thought to me, Ken. Yo, yo, peace, peace. Uh, like, like, peace, peace to the panel. Yo, I'm just coming up here in support. Um, and I guess the only contribution I could have to the conversation now is to, um, you know, really get the understanding out there that the comedic people in its essence now, it's it went through a lot of different changes with a lot of different ethnicities coming in and out of ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet. But at its essence, is African, and it practiced an African form of religion. And so we can see when we study African spirituality in general, we can also see similar, not exactly the same, but similar concepts, spiritual concepts being promoted, being practiced um, and living today. And so I just wanted to bring that out because it seems like some people in some of these conversations are forgetting that, that the transmission of African knowledge or African ways of being is forgotten and that comedic religion or comedic culture 
comedic spirituality is a natural expression of Africans' way of interacting with the world and the universe. And also the other thing to take note of is that it's an ever-evolving spirituality. It's not necessarily static, but that the Africans took a look at what they understood as their understanding or their base knowledge of what they knew and then engaged in what was new and then un took, made an understanding from that. You know, that's what you get when you study comedic history. That's what you get when you study African spirituality in general. This is the syncretisms that we see that Africans do consistently across space and time. You know, that's the only thing I really could add to this conversation that I don't really hear, you know, being t being spoken about a lot. You know, I hear I maybe hear it every once in a while, but, you know, not really just emphasizing the fact that Afri this is an African based form of practice, our spirituality and culture. And that it is not static per se, but that it changes according to space and time. And we can see elements of it wherever we find Africans living. What Cosmic Thought said is correct. And then understand Ifa. Ifa is basically a branch of that. Mm -hmm. This is a younger branch of that. Vudan is the older branch of that. But well, yeah, but well, yeah, because you have the remember the Koi are are practicing. And they have Kagan in their religion, so to speak, right? In their right. way of following, their Shimsu, right? You have Kagan, you have his wife, you have his children, you have, uh, you have, you also have a name in there. I'm not even going to get into that, which is an ancient Ramesh name. It's an ancient, what you would call comedic name, but comedic is not even a word. It's just what our brothers and sisters decide to term it over here later on remember the word is shimsu some people want to call it a religion you can say that if you want to uh we follow a way of life basically the difference is your religion is static it's stuck what muhammad said then you have to follow now what jesus said then you have to follow now what so-and-so said then you have to follow now where us we're dictated to by nature exactly exactly and that's the african way of being you know, that's how, that's why you get condomble. That's why you get, that's how you get different variations of Ifa, Pa, so to speak. You know, if you're looking, you know, like if we do in the West and we look for static forms of spirituality, we're not really going to find it because the African was not static at all. You know, and so when we're, when we're looking at, I think it's important to understand that when we're looking at ancient Kemet, we're looking at, you know, the ability of Africans to codify their culture, you know, in documentation, you know, but that doesn't mean it was like stagnant. That doesn't mean that was it. That's why we see these variations in these different priesthoods arising at different times and periods in their history, because if certain priests and priestesses getting together, seeing that different ways of working with energy may, re may achieve and receive different results. That's why different priesthoods, so on and so forth, went together and combined, separated, and did their different things. And so that's the only way we can understand it. This is how you can get Africans coming from West Africa and then engaging in, uh, you know, European understanding of spirituality and creating uh, condomble and then going over into Haiti and creating their religion and their form of it. But it's still similar. You know, it's not the same. I had different discussions with people. It's not the same. You know, the the uh, the understanding of what is the... um. Uh, I'm trying to remember the snake goddess in West Africa and Benin at the moment, the snake god. In Benin, in Nigeria? Yeah. Hold up, let me... I'm trying to remember at the moment. I'm in my car. I can't really pull it up. But you have the same representation over in Haiti in their, in their system of Udon. You know, you know they want to, when I was talking with a priest the other day, they want to they wanna discuss the differences, which is fine. You can do that similarities that exist, which is the name and which is the form. You talking about Aida Wedo? Mm. Talking about Dan Coley. It's possible. It's possible. No, I don't it doesn't it doesn't sound like it. No. Nana Baluka. Sounds like he's talking about mommy water or somebody like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. But mommy water not exactly but but the principle is the principle I'm discussing. I noticed uh when I'm having these discussions, I need to be more precise in my language. I'm, I'm working on that. That's okay. That's okay. 
Uh, let me let me let me let me let me get controversial. Yeah, let me get controversial right now. <laughs> I'm seen. I don't know. I don't think I can put it up on the screen actually, because you know we like to keep it family family friendly out of here, out here. So let's see. The whole says, "Who gave you the right to uh, to hmm, how do I do F to uck? Oh yeah, to uck off what was laid down by the priests and bearers of Kemen, etc. You made up some ucks totally different from ancient Kemen and have the nerve to claim Kemenic science. Hmm." I don't know, my guy. I don't know, my guy. My guy, the Hulk, the Hulk, the Hulk, the Hulk. My guy, my guy, my guy. I want to know. Uh, yeah, I want to know who you're talking to, my guy. Like, <laughs> you know, like, who you talking you know, to, you, brother? I, I don't understand. What's what's up with all this hostility out here, my guy? Number one. Number two. Would you like to jump on the panel? You know, so we can get some clarity of what you're trying to say. Uh, number three. Okay, let's just see. What was laid down? Okay. okay. Basically, you're saying, yeah, let me just articulate you. What gives, you know, you, i.e. the New Age comedic practitioners and philosophers, the right to discard everything that the priests and pharaohs of Kemet uh, produced um, to uh, fabricate a totally different uh, new form of... Uh, ancient Kemet and have the nerve to reclassify uh, its nomenclature. Hmm. Yeah? Is, 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 is that a better way of actually, you know, interpreting the words? I'm wow. going to do that. So, I don't know, has, does any anyone of us here, have we discarded what the priests and pharaohs, and when I say, when we say priests, right, it has, it has, sometimes it has, I don't want to say spooky version, but I'd rather use the term scholars, the ancient scholars and priests, a dual term, scholar and priest, because priests, when you think of priests in these days or religious, you think of a religious leader, and most of these religious leaders aren't educated. These individuals had to be highly educated in science and philosophy, natural science and philosophy. So let's, let's, let's use that, scholars and priests and pharaohs of Kemet. Okay, so, like, does any of us here, like, you know, discard anything that the pharaohs and the uh, scholar priests had to say? Not right, at all. Least. In fact, okay. when you... No, 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 no. We... wait, 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 just, just, just one word answers for now, yeah, just, just okay. one more. So, so there is the consensus that we don't do that, okay? All right, cool. So, next, it says here, you made up some, okay, so, what have, you know, we made up that's completely different and new? And it's not wrong to say we have made up something different on you, but I want to know what what have we made up that's different on you that we've even exhibited on this panel today? Anyone? Uh, have we? Nothing is made up from what I do. Everything that I do, you could find there. Okay. Uh, Sankofa. I'm trying to. Yeah, I don't. I don't get what this this cat is talking about. Like, there's nothing that's been revealed as far as discussions are concerned. What's so, made up? Let's ask him yeah. that. What are you yeah. talking about that's made up in particular? Point something out. Because everything that's been discussed is not only backed up by culture and history, but it's backed up by experience. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I don't understand what this, that, that part of the question is. That just sounds like somebody that's frustrated. All right. So the whole, we're giving you ample opportunity, like, come on, like, you can come in on the panel, you know, you don't have to show your face, all we can hear is your voice, or you can keep on typing in the comment section, and just like, you know, if you're saying this is hard refutation, refutation, just refute one thing, um, but so far, I don't think we've given much information that needs to be refuted, all right, all right, let's continue. Let's see what the comments saying. Hassan says, variations happen in all religions, like Christianity to capitalism to Protestants and all the variations, Islam to Shia, Sunni, Khawarij to Nation of Islam. Some same for him, Buddhism, Hinduism. So what's the point? Okay, cool. Okay, let me ask you. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, that's a good question. Although you should really define what you mean by real. All right, I want to ask this. This is a this is a very good question, and I want everybody to to, to um, answer this question as much as best as you can. And it's all right to have um, you know different opinions on the panel. So, are the gods of Kemet real? 
Yes. Uh, let's, let's so. Okay, cosmic. Well, let's start with one word answers, and then we'll go through the um, go through with the explanations. So, are the gods of Kemet real? Cosmic. Uh, I'm gonna say no. Jeez, cool. Um, and I'm going to be a little b boy. <laughs> and uh, uh, share both your answers and say yes and no. <laughs> I thought you said one word answers, bro. <laughs> like, <come on. laughs> it, what are you talking about? Yes, no? You know, you know. You know? Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. You know? You know? You know? <laughs> you know? Uh, and the only reason why I'm actually doing that is because the um, the question is, is is worded in a way that it is for me it's unintended not unintelligible well it's, it's right? trigger alert and he's gonna ask literally and then i'm yes. going to explain why literally and then it's yes. it's gonna be done yeah <laughs> because you know yeah yeah there is Come a on. there is a literalism there because my understanding of the you know, the expression of comedic religion, like when you say Ra, you know, you have several variations, of, especially when you're looking in the glyphs, like you can talk about Ra the sun, or you can talk about Ra the life giving fire essence that gives birth to life, you know, but nonetheless, it still is an energy. It still has a way in which you can interact with it, in which you worship it per se, or not even worship it, but work with it in order to cultivate it within yourself. You have that Amen aspect of consciousness which is also the amen state of being of all of existence, you know, that existence that existed before existence, like that none, that noon state of being, you know, where everything is absolute, is in absolute repose, you know, like it's that thing that banged before the big bang. So it does exist, but not in the form, you know, that people are asking, like, do the gods exist like a physical globe with the consciousness and the will to mess with human affairs? So that's why the, the question is a yes and a no. ET in my chat, brother Reggie. I see you in the chat. Sabres in the building. Um, let me give you the yes. And let's go from there. Um, we consider Seb to be the earth. The myths that we tell about the earth have adumbrations of truth in them. Meaning that if something happens where something grows, we create a story. Uh, concerning that method and how it came to be, usually the story has a little magnificence about it. But for the most part, you see the earth have a certain thing about it that it's talking about, such as a Nile flowing or such as mountains that have grown from uh, tectonic plates shifting and earth growing up and creating mountains. So when the sun and the moon do certain things in the sky on a regular basis, and we make myths around those things, those things happen. And they created a story because they didn't have television like you do today. So when you ask me, is, is Gabriel, and I tell you, don't you live on earth? And you say, yeah, you call it earth now, but that wasn't the term for it then. It was called Geb, wasn't it? Right. So it's called Geb if we look at the etymology and the history of the word. So Geb exists. If I ask you, do you have a soul or does your body have energy in it? You, you know, do you have the ability to do work? You'll say, yes. I say, you're an Asar. You'll say, what is that? I say, do you have a, a personality? You say, yes. Okay. I say, you have a Ba. Because that's what we consider a soul and that's part of the definition of Ba. Do you have a spirit? We say, yes, that's a Ka. Do you have a car? Yes, you have a spirit because you're in moods. So you're spirited in some type of way when you're in these moods. Are you not? Does the universe not start with energy first? Before you start to get to anything with time because it's energy, it can't be created or destroyed. So there is no time at that time. That's why we call it hehu. You understand? So these things exist. The stories may be exaggerated about what they do, yep. but they're telling you what they do, what they are, and they're giving you formats of how they actually exist. You can't tell me Geb doesn't exist because you live on it. Jeez. 
You can't tell me there's no Asar because you're alive. And we consider Asar to be the universal soul. I'm going to give my answer. And then hopefully afterwards, um, you know, Brother Reggie will come in and give his. All right. So you know what I'm going to do? Yeah? Because I'm going to treat this just as I treat, you know, the normal stuff that I do with religion. I'm going to draw four books. So right here, we've got the Middle Egyptian, an introduction to the language and culture of hieroglyphics, second edition, old school, yeah? So I'm going to say to you, right, the question is a bit oddly phrased, all right? So I'm going to do my best to answer it as this. The Egyptian gods, known as the Nitaru. Let's see you here, yeah? What does James P. Allen, is this James P. Allen? Is this James P. Allen I'm reading from? Yep, James P. Allen. I'm going to do it like this. The Egyptian gods and goddesses are nothing more or less than the elements and forces of the universe. The hmm. gods did not just control these phenomena, like the Greek god Zeus with his lightning bolts. They were the elements and forces of the world. We recognize this quality by saying that the Egyptian gods were in, in, sorry, imminent in the phenomena of nature. The wind, for example, was the god Shu in one text, Shu describes himself as follows. I am Shu, my clothing is the air, my skin is the pressure of the wind. When an Egyptian felt the wind on his face, he felt that Shu had brushed against him. Mm. So, in that sense, yeah, Shu. <laughs> the Egyptian gods or the Kemetic gods are very real. When you understand it from a philosophical and a scientific basis rather than a religious or spooky basis, right? And I will also say this, that the comedic uh, gods are not real in the sense that, <clears throat> let's see if I can get a bit, <sighs> a bit, a bit, ten Ooh, okay, only six people, come on, okay, cool. They're not real in the sense that these uh, forces and elements and principles within inside of nature have been finalized by the Egyptians. Okay? They have been divinized by the Egyptians. And those of us, we have adopted the divination or the divina, divinize, divin, how do I, do I even hear that word? Divinizing? God damn, I'm in England, yeah, I can't speak English correctly. Anyways, these comectics have divinized these elements, right? And these elements aren't necessarily divine. What do I mean by that? Today, in normal society, nobody really thinks that the wind is divine, right? Or the sun is divine. But it's the emphasis that we place on these things that make them divine. Just as like a Muslim doesn't think that Jesus is divine, but Christians have divinized Jesus, so therefore he is real and he is divine. So in that sense, right, I would say it's not divine to everybody else, but to those who accept it as divine, it is divine. And it is, it is a God. Absolutely. That's the fullest of my answer. And then I mean, we got plus... now... Go on. Go on. Oh, no, I was, I was saying, it, I, and I think people, people are convoluted as it is, right? They... They say stuff like, oh, you, 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 we're not going back to the old ways. You're sitting there with something that's already a thousand years old when you pull up your Bible or your Quran. What are you talking about? So when we, <laughs> when, when you go to Africa, you're going to find ancestor worship. It's because that's what we do. We venerate our ancestors. That's not going away. That's not going anywhere. When your mother dies, you're going to cry. It's very simple. You gonna cry when when you when you uh when your friend passes away. You gonna cry too. You know. So even when an atheist tells you, "Oh, you don't have a soul," or blah 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 blah, this that the other, what you crying for when people pass away? Then you should be like a robot. This shouldn't affect you. So when you talk about old ways, you don't make sense. All we're doing is sticking to our culture. Our culture says that we venerate our ancestors. Our culture says that we give praise to things that you know incite us to do good things you don't you don't give praise to the sun but every time that sun hits your face dopamine is released in your brain 
So science is working against your argument as well. That's one thing about being a Shemsu. Science works with us. You'll blame it on this. We'll tell you it's this. The other thing is, like, because we're going to get into the word pagan probably today. You'll say there's gods. There's just one God. But the whole universe begets. And we know dark matter and dark energy are two different things. We know the sun and the earth are two different. So there's gods. What are you talking about? And all these things help birth you. So you, you go know, right around the corner, but we still going to find you. We got you sent in your chair. Let me get let me get Reggie on quickly. Let me get Reggie on. But hold on, family tree. Like, if you are loving the information so far, I don't understand why you haven't already hit the like button, right? Huh. To be hitting the like button. Uh, you know, I see Cash App Reggie. I'm, I'm like, where's where's Cash App Times TV, baby? I ain't seen no cash apps. I ain't seen no super chats. You lot show some love. If you want your um, comments read out on the screen, super chat us. If you want your comments read out on the screen, uh, what's the word? Uh, Chip a dollar. Cash app on. Come on, man. <laughs> send some offerings all our way. Let's get it. All right. Reggie, talk to me, brother. Yes. Yeah, support, support Titans TV. It's always a pleasure to be on. And, um, and, uh, and, and certainly with... Uh, uh, both uh, uh, both Titans TV been with me to the museum to the Met and uh, and so has a saw. And, um, I have to check who else is on the panel because there's a couple of people who I don't uh, I don't appear anymore uh, on the on the uh, channel with. Um, so who's on the, who's on the who's on the channel? Uh, Shaka. All right, Cosmic. Oh, yes, because. Okay. All the work that I've done over the last uh, eight years or so, I have some. I have someone who called me a pseudo on another channel, and wow. said there's nothing that I have said has been uh, uh, scientific. And I'm like, you wouldn't even be talking on these channels about the subject if it wasn't for me, because I help bring scholarship um, to the boards um, to to YouTube, and. Um, I, I do think I, that I do work hard and, and uh, I have publications, I have a journal article, I have a peer in, uh, 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 institutions presenting. Um, I'm respected by my teachers, uh, Dr. McKetty and uh, Dr. Jeffries and uh, Professor Small and uh, so many and Dr. Rosalyn Jeffries and Joy Hardeman and, and so many and ASCAC at large and I have a uh, person right who just gets on the chat and says that i am a pseudo because he disagrees with me and so uh, there has to be a penalty and i'm exacting a penalty on this person I'm not gonna name he's not on so let's get to the topic i think that uh both uh, uh titus tv um uh made an important important uh Quote, he cited something from J.P. Allen, which is definitely, definitely uh, really relevant, makes sense. And I think that a saw um, is, a saw and car is actually, uh, uh, he has a very, very good mind that if he didn't say that, I would have been a little bit rougher, right? They are, they are real in the concepts of that they exist. The veneration and the mythology, I think that that is, Separate. Exaggerated, exaggerated uh, explanations of science. Right, and as we say that respectfully because it's ours, it's our culture, and that culture created all the other mythos in the other cultures. But uh, what I will say though is that um, now we are moving past Tawi. So Kemet is in the tenth dynasty onwards. Right, as for as long as they used, they venerated the black cow, right? The black bull. Prior to that, it was Tawi. In Tawi civilization, which is Old Kingdom or Hinu, the residents, uh, they didn't, uh, they were moving to the veneration of Kim by the uh, getting in the sixth uh, dynasty that the, 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 or the pyramid. Dynasty. So we see the elevation. We actually do, we see a text called Witness uh, Pyramid Text, 
where we get the most information. But prior to that, prior to all of that, what what archaeology is telling us and is that is that Kemet borrowed these concepts from another civilization, uh, African civilization. So that's Nakata and that's Nubian A. And so we have Bruce Williams' work, uh, we have Stan Hendricks' works, we have lots of uh, works on the uh, the earlier uh, civilizations of Nakata and Nubia, which were brother brothers or sister uh, civilizations. And so we see Osiris or Seer is not in that in those uh, civilizations. Uh, we see the constructs of creating a king, but we 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 uh, um, yeah, so, but we know that the king was the uh, direct uh, connection to the uh, to the spiritual system of them. So when we when we look at the Kata culture, and we we find um, we find the Kata seems to be a little older than Nubian culture, Nubian A culture, and what we find what we find is that. Nakata's uh, chief um, deity, if you want to call her, Natur, or Natur, was Bat. Bat was, um, what, uh, uh, Bat is a horned uh, female. Um, and that was bequeathed, she later became uh, Hawat Hor, or Hodor, or however you want to mention it. But so we see these constructs uh, forming. So we can say through syncretism that these we uh, we got smarter, but we also got more into belief. I um except for my brother Saw, um I I have a real problem with people with Kemet religion. Because first, Kemet is only in the tenth dynasty over. They don't know enough about the old kingdom and they don't know anything about pre dynasty. So I am on a, I'm very cautious. Uh, I'm very cautious to, to give way because then I'm giving way to these people's new belief systems where they are jumbling up and messing up everything. They don't read the text. They can't read the text. They never use the text. They use the text in English, like the translated, like the translated, like the translated right? And they can't, they can't read the constructs in the in the, in the religion, or oh, sorry, in the culture. So, I'm not going to. I'm going to say that they existed as principles, with, and they so that they were real. What we did was do anthropomorphism. We, 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 we created those humans created those relationships. But those relationships are based on something that's very, very real. But all of these people doing these ceremonies, which are really funerary ceremonies, right? Based on coffin text, like uh, saying a nuke geb and a nuke shoe. And, and, and when they say a nuke geb and a nuke shoe, the Africans were saying shoe was speaking or the principal Shu was speaking, not these people. You are not Shu. You are not, you cannot be Shu. You cannot be Geb. You cannot be none of those things. You can't take the qualities of them. You can, what you can do is say what our ancestors said. So I'll stop right now. I know I said a lot. Thank you. Thank you for your time. But if we look at pre dynastic culture, we find that it's very feminine, that the, in a sense of leadership, and that the concept of uh, the first dynasty uh, king, Nurmur, and the people behind them, pretty much because now wars are being fought and things like that, and kingship is important, they changed the religion drastically. They changed the belief system drastically. And so, but they are still based on um, principles, and, and so they did nothing wrong except for change direction. But if you're not talking about Bot and you're not talking about me, 
right? And then you have uh, said or said uh, existed as a as a, a nurture and the term. Uh, you're 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 starting to make up stuff. So I'll stop. Thank thank you for your uh, time, and I'll and I'll just listen for a while. Jeez. I love it. I love hearing um, our good brother Reggie speak. Uh, Cosmic, did you want to say something before I jump? In? Uh, um. Brother Reggie, so you said one of my mentors, Dr. Joy Hardeman. That was pretty dope. Um, but um, besides that, no, no, everything is cool. Cool. Let me let me jump. Let me jump on the Hulk. Let me let me actually no. Before I jump on the Hulk, let me do this. Oh Let's wait, wait, Kalam. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. I did have something to say. Hold a second. Um, wait, 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 wait. Before you say, before you say, it, let me shout him up because he's he. You know what I'm saying? He's supporting Titans TV right now. A lot of the viewers are out there. You know, show. but if you <laughs> haven't already hit the like button, you're not really supporting Titans TV. So hit the like button to support Titans TV. But my good brother out here has gone, gone that one step extra and hit us up with a super chat. All systems need to be overhauled, syncretized, and updated. Oh, man. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sankova. No. Well, what I wanted to say was just looking at and studying the ways in which Africans created civilization gives us an insight into how we can do the same. You know, that's the benefit of knowing, you know, comedic religion, comedic spirituality, comedic culture. And that is the benefit of keeping its information alive, relevant, and pertinent, you know, because we can use some of those same abstract intellectual principles that they use in order to create science, in order to understand and win from nature, you know, that knowledge and those principles that allowed them to do surgery, that allowed them to create herbology, that allowed them to create mathematics, or that allowed them to further the knowledge that their ancestors created, you know, with them in order to create the civilizations and the sciences that gave the civilization that, you know, the information that it has now. So that's the benefit of understanding and knowing ancient Egyptian, ancient Kemet was an African civilization. And then striving to understand what principles that they used in order to create that civilization. Good point. I, I would say this because <clears throat> you're not Geb. No, you're going to be Geb when you die. You're going to be part of the earth. You, you're not going <laughs> you, you're going to eventually be consumed by Ra. And when Ra explodes, like all sons do, you're going to be scattered just like other any other son explodes and your energy is going to travel just like you're created from the same portions of the sun you are a star because that's what we consider to be the energy that makes you move every part of you is a natural and when you wash up we hear the ancients tell us this they say my buttocks which is set they say my phallus which is a saw my hands which are this my hair which is new so they're telling you through the text Everything we yep. tell you is coming from the text. This is why Saber Reggie venerates what I say because he knows I have the text that come from your ancestors, people who live, who wrote this down to tell you exactly how they felt about how they would go about their day, how they would go about their culture. So I'm moving that same method because it makes life more surreal. And not only does it make it feel more surreal, it connects you to nature the way that you should be connected to nature. I won't grow up worshiping Jesus on my wall. I'll probably have a saw or something else on my wall to remind me of who I am. This is why I made the quote, remember who you are and being a saw, because these methods remind you of your African personality and your actuality. And this is part of the issue. You you want to let kids grow up like this. You want to let them grow up like this. You want to, and then you produce the best gang member. And that's what you're producing right now. But if you remember your African culture and your ancestors, you'll produce the best of that. And we have the methods that they use in order to do so. That's right. All right, let me jump on. Okay, uh, can I ask you know, a question? I, just, uh, I need but, to ask the question. So... Okay, so Brother Sankofa, how you doing, man? Uh, it was good to meet you finally. Likewise, likewise, brother. How's it going? All right. So I just need to check. Uh, um, okay, I, again, I have this problem with uh, Kemet, right? Because Kemet, uh, Kemet is really the worship of the Ka Ka, uh, the Ka Kem, 
right? It derives from that. Um, the people who talk Kemet, Kemet, Kemet all day, not you per se, but I am going to ask you some questions, right? I don't see any references or anything to Kakem, to uh, to uh, Minerva, the uh, or, or Apis or anything like that. I see. I see in the scholarship of those people who are supposedly studying Kemet that they're very, very uh, weak in the context of uh, understanding why things are the way they are. So I have to ask you, uh, who, who was your, and I respect you, you you're a very talented uh, person, uh, brother, um, but I have to ask you, who, who was your teacher in the, in, in this concept. Well, all right. Um, I'm glad you came out with that because I heard your I heard your conversations and I wanted to just be direct uh, if there was an issue, but I didn't want to assume or cause anything. So I'm glad you, you came forth with that. Now, I said earlier, I said you named one of the people in which, you know, I claimed as my mentor, which was Dr. Joy Hardiman, because I helped organize ASCAC meetings over there in the Northwest for years. So if you need to check my recommendations or check any of my credentials, ask her about Banu. Uh, my initial person who helped me understand the greatness of black history was named Kalfani and Wamba. Are these people that, is Kalfani somebody you know that's a doctor? Kalfani, no. I, I don't know. Kalfani is from who? I don't, which Kalfani? I said his name, Kalfani and Wamba. I don't, I, I don't know. I'm from the, you know, initially, but that's fine. You see what, what, what I think we should look at is developing a community of brothers and sisters that have this information and that are growing in the knowledge, not necessarily somebody that is, you know, there already. So if there's anything that, and it's kind of funny you're saying this because I don't know of much information that I've said to critique besides what was critiqued earlier. But, I didn't um, critique you, I just asked you a question. Yeah, yeah, but- I didn't get to that, so, I just wanted to get to know you. So. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Joy Hardiman, I've known Dr. Joy Hardiman for 30 years. Okay. Uh, I've known her for 30 years. I've uh, worked with so her. So you know Orwa, you know, you know the Arunga family, Marsha Tate and all of them. No, I know Dr. Joy okay. Hardiman. Right, uh, Dr. Joy Hardiman would be like the head of the community. I'm talking about the other brothers and sisters inside the community. No. I and I would be a part that. of that, yeah. I don't know them, but I have worked with Dr. Joy Hardiman and I brought her to the Schomburg Center uh, mm -hmm. to speak with Dr. Milana Karanga. Uh, I did that and I've worked with her recently in the ASCAC mission where she asked me to uh, to talk about museum studies as right. she, uh, working on applied African, uh, uh, applied African art and literature. So I, I okay. so I just want to know what you're, okay, so. The, and then so hold, the, on, hold on one second, Brother Reggie, hold on one second. I've also studied mm -hmm. and learned under Dr. Carr and Dr. Mario Bay. Okay, so I know both of them. Uh, I'm, I'm, they're my, uh, they're my little big, uh, well, little big brothers, because I was involved in it uh, when they were in, uh, I think, Ohio State and uh and and they empower right and they become a masters dr uh, mario Beatty and i have a, a good good relationship with both of those people they don't uh they they're more philologists uh dr Beatty. uh so i don't i don't i think his religion is your book i don't think that he yeah, no, he practices in a con based spirituality. Yeah, he's uh, initiated as a priest there. Can I, can I say something? Can I say something? Hold on. Something. Yeah, I got you, got you. Yeah, just to say, greetings, one and all, yeah. Beautiful conversation. Yeah, greetings to all um, brothers on the panel. Um, and, I, you know, I, I love conversations such as these, yeah. Um, I, I, I did have a contribution to make in relation to this concept of my art as a way of life. And, and I'll come back to that in a second. But just on this conversation now, because I don't, I, I feel like it got, it, it, it was evolving beautifully um, in terms of the education about spirituality 
um, and its philosophical principles and ideas and ideals. Um, and I, I think, yeah, and, and please accept this um, uh, contribution with the utmost humility and respect here. Yeah? I think it would be um, unfortunate if we just got into a conversation about um, brothers and sisters' personal kind of you know, trajectory and development. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay. I, feel like I, I heard that. Listen, I heard that you did interrupt. And, uh, and uh, since you are talking uh, to me, uh, I think that most people. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, sorry, bro, sorry, bro, Reggie. I'm, I'm not talking to you per se. I'm, I'm making a contribution to that. To the no, I, I'm just going to end. I just wanted to know yeah. when, so that I can temper, so that I can temper whatever I have no, to no, say. No. I, I, I head up already, Reggie. But I, I was, I was going to actually go on to suggest that you, you, you've made a, a, a couple points that I think are very interesting in terms of um, pre-dynastic. Um, what we are, what we refer to as uh, Kemetu uh, philosophy, yeah, and spirituality, and I think that uh, maybe a, a, a fruitful way to go with that would be if it is indeed the case, and I would in fact agree that it is the case that people's knowledge of that is generally speaking low. Then let's contribute that to the conversation, yeah. Let's bring um, Bast and Min and so on and so forth, yeah. To the conversation and begin to raise people's awareness of those elements of the culture and how it evolved and why if that makes sense i think that would be a beautiful well i agree um, I, I mean i agree and that's why the reason why is because um lots of people in our community right when they approach now uh what they're calling ancient each i mean they're approaching ancient egypt and they're calling it Kemet. Yes. They don't know that Kemet is a later construct beginning of the 10th dynasty. Of and and so it sounds ignorant to me when people just keep trying to call the whole civilization Kemet. And then you, I hope you understand what I'm saying. When yes, it was yeah. not, right? Mm -hmm. It was an evolution of thoughts uh, and practices and rituals and and, and so the earliest civilization that we are really talking about is the Tawi civilization, the two land civilizations, yes, right? Semitawi, Semitawi. I, I, I understood, my brother. I, I, before I Semitawi, like... before it was even, before it was even united, right? right. And mm -hmm. so what, what what we have is now when we come under attack of other groups of people, yes. um, and they and they and they have they have good attacks. And they and they they usually attack the people who are less less knowledgeable on the subject, right? And I cringe because um, because they can't defend things. They simply can't defend things, right? And so, uh, so the show, the all I wanted to know was from Brother Sankofa was pretty much just some general orientation, but we could move. We can move to the points that need to be talked about, meaning that it's a growth in ideas, and we can discuss what's real and what's unreal. I'll stop. Thank you for yes, your time. Okay. No, thank you, brother. Right, let's get. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm only suggesting that that you have so much more wisdom to give on the, on this subject, and it, it, it would be a shame if, if if we never got that because you know we, we got sidetracked into a into a less peaceful conversation. Shaka yeah. with a sweet mouth, you. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> I listen. Let's see the Hulk. Yeah, I listen. The Hulk. I, I love the way you come with some stuff here. Yeah. So, yeah, Callum, is the field of reads real? You see, I can simply ask you questions, and your answers will prove you all have something different than ancient Kemet, obviously. And I'll say to you, my good brother, my good brother, my good brother, my good brother. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh. Unfortunately, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. You know, I hear you. I hear you because. You're not speaking to the, the normals. Like, this panel is filled with very intelligent intellectuals, right? Who actually delve in and read, right? And some of us here actually read the language itself. So we understand. And we understand, um, you know, some of this information is technically initiation information. Certain things are part of uh, cult temples that made its way into mortuary um, texts. And these things, like I'm saying these words, right? They're just gonna be words to you. If I say to you a plant, 
you're going to be like, it's where? I don't even know what that is. The house of flag. You ain't going to know what that is, right? <laughs> and this is where that type of um, verbiage actually comes from. It's all to do with symbolisms and metaphors, all right? And I'm going to point you. I don't know if you're even going to have the time to even care to look at this book. Conversations in the House of Life. Mm. Yeah? Conversations in the House of Life. This is a new translation of the ancient Egyptian book of thought, Richard uh, Jasno, Carl Theodor uh, Zuzik. Okay? Um, and Harroz Witz Verlag. You know the Germans, yeah, they do their thing. They do their thing. But in here, you'll find out all right, that the Fields of Reeds, right, is actually talking about things inside of the house of life you know the whole thing a bowl of cereal today kalan you know what the field of reeds, you know what the bowler you've been in a wheat field before you done seen it a million times. what you don't know what wow. and it looked just like that in the per in the in the book of coming forth in the book of uh coming forth by day you call it the book of the dead they show you it's a field of reeds you see? and they ate cereal and you probably ate a bowl you probably ate frosted flakes today man tell the truth no no, no. but Big i think it goes even it goes even deeper it goes even deeper okay and it will let you know that these reeds and this field has a lot to do with the house of life okay and i would even i'm not going to tell you what it is because you know what yeah uh, like the energy you're coming with i'm not even going to i'm just going to say to you think reed pens and think papyrus rolls and think what's inside of these papyrus rolls and why do you want your soul to just be constantly living there? Okay, that's all. Let, let, me, all right. let me tell them where it's located because the field of reeds in the sky in the Amduat is located over the Congo. Ooh. If you didn't know, you're, yeah, astro you're astronomy. astronomy. Yeah, you know. So, brother, yeah. if you want to have that discussion, come come here. Come come yeah. come over here. I'm gonna take you to the Perang. I got a cyber Jeez. Perang. We'll talk to you about it. It's located Jeez. right over the Congo, if you didn't know. You, you still look I, at I, it I, like the Big Dipper. We look at it as a SAR. You, you ain't seen it like that before. And then you see the rabbit underneath. I know you see the rabbit because it's still in the Greek symbols that you probably know about. But that's why we call him Unefer. And you see it in the metal nature as a rabbit, don't you? Come here, little dude. Come here. Let me talk to you, brother. Let's talk. I just try to hope. I just try to keep it simple. I try to keep it simple, but when you're ready, yeah, and you want to jump on the panel, right? I'm telling you, we got the brothers here that's on the next levels. I'm speaking to you on the local political level. I haven't even got into the cosmic, I haven't even gone into the divine, nothing like that. But my good brother Assal will take you all the way up through the three degrees, yeah, and bring you into the cosmic as well. God damn, I ain't think you're ready for that. All right, let me see. Let me quickly just see what we got here. The wood, we're coming to you in a hot second. Let me just see what we got here. Um, can I, uh, okay, do, 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 do. here we go. All right, it says here, we need a community. We need institutions. We do. Um, and I will ask uh, the American brothers on the panel, like what um, institutions would you recommend um, over there in America? Because I could tell by the, uh, the, the, the currency sign, it's American, so. You know, my American brothers will point you in the right direction. Okay. Uh, let me quickly see. Da, 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 da. Uh, man, like Sarah is up in the building. Um, da, 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 da. Uh -huh. To answer the question, religion is dead. Only the mentally dead subscribe to a religion, in my opinion. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't even put in that up. Um, there you go. All right, cool. I think I am finished. And then Hassan. You know, it says religion all the way. All right, cool. <laughs> good brother, do good. Talk to me, King. How you doing? Shalom. Shalom. Hey, Shalom. Good to see you. Thanks for having me on. Great subject. Love it, love it, love it. And I know you're, you're a brother that, you know, loves uh, Dr. Ben's work. I've seen you a couple of books. You know, I know you get it in. Did you want to add anything to the conversation so far? Yeah, I, I lived in New York City for about 10 years, and I had... Uh, Serve this, call him an eccentric multimillionaire. His father was, parents were very famous. His father was Robert Goldwater, who was uh, the head of the Metropolitan Museum of Art's primitivist section, which was funded by Nelson Rockefeller and referred to uh, African art 
for uh, you know in the West. I mean, he was a Jew, a blue-eyed Jewish man, uh, and his mother was the famous artist Louise Bourgeois. Um, but uh, you know, ironically, uh, you know, African art it, it collected in America was historically called primitivist art, and only in the last uh, few decades did the uh, you know they push and change the title. So the Metropolitan Museum of Art that had the largest collection of ancient art, African artifacts, possibly in the world outside of Africa, was you know called the Museum of Primitivism. So the, I mean the concept that culture comes from Africa it was largely widely accepted. However, the you know the biblical narrative you know you know God forbid Egypt is the bad guy in the Bible, and Daniel's vision of the the four kingdoms is that it progressed and moved on, and that's just a history lesson. That's why it was referred to uh, primitivism. Um, and, and you know, also knowing that African Americans are, I believe, the most successful, wealthiest uh, Af you know, blacks in the world, even more so in Africa. Like, I live in a, a Detroit, Michigan suburb, Southfield, that is, I think, one of the three wealthiest black areas in the whole world. And from what I understand, there's not a single place in Africa that uh you know it's not super expensive few hundred thousand dollar houses but there's miles and miles and miles of single family housing you know where everyone has a lawn and a car and a house uh with all the infrastructure and from my understanding nothing like that exists in africa so like uh, like marcus garvey a lot of the pan-african is movements uh are somewhat based in america nation of islam even to the revival of comedic culture uh, is, is probably more coming out of America than uh, um, Africa. Although it, it's interesting that I was mentioning the, you know, the the primitivist that if you want to revive comedic culture, you have to show that it's it's not dead. You know, just uh, pointing out the importance that it played in history that's already been well accepted to say it didn't die. And uh, I lean on Freemasonry. Freemasonry has kind of died out, uh, but anyone who knows the history of the West. Almost all of the great names of uh, developers of Western culture, European royalty, scientists, founders of America, were all Freemasons, and uh, Freemasonry required learning comedic culture. It, it was a requirement for going up in the degrees, was uh, mastering comedic culture. So, uh, um, you know, I've studied a lot of it, uh, you know, rel relatively, and I, I live in a majority African American neighborhood, Metro Detroit. Although Christianity dominates, so you know, I, I would say you probably have more pushback from pushing comedics from uh, African American Christians than from uh, you know than from whites. But to gain some sort of acceptance and to you know show that that uh, even though the kingdoms may have died out, uh, there might have been you know rise and fall of nations. Uh, that the essential comedic religion, uh, you know, the spirit lives on, and how you demonstrate that would be you know beyond me. So you are absolutely correct about how the Metropolitan Museum of Art uh, dealt with uh, separating uh, uh, Nile Valley culture from, uh, from uh, uh, the other cultures. It's interesting that Ethiopian culture uh, was in that primitive uh, section of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, but um, the Metropolitan Muse Museum of Art has just changed the direction as long as the Brooklyn Museum. And so now there is a uh, exhibition called the African Origin of Civilization uh, in the Met pinpointing uh, Diop and talking about its new mission to combine the two wings on the first floor. So in 2022, this exhibition began in to 2024, it will stand uh, until they revamp the old uh, primitive work of, uh, of Rockefeller and, and the other uh, ph uh, philanthropists that you talked about. So there, there, is some, uh, there is some good news on that front. In the Brooklyn Museum of Art, I think the curator, I think her name, uh, her name is Katya, waiting for an email from her, but basically they revamp their description of the ancient Egyptian wing and basically has some important statements saying that uh, ancient Egypt uh, is 
uh, um, was developed in the South, on the, basically Nakata and Nubian A cultures. And so because of the overwhelming new information from scholars of all different ethnicities, uh, the Met and the Brooklyn Museum and other places are, and these new PhD students that are coming out have changed, have been forced to change their uh, dialogue. You're correct again about any religion will have a pushback from the murderous Christians. Uh, you didn't call it that, but I am calling it that because it was Black Christianity that stripped Africans coming into the Americans uh, through slavery and and pushed them to uh, pushed them to Christianity, stripping them of African culture. And in Africa, it was in fact Islam and the Saharan slave trade that disrupted all of uh, Africa during the uh, Sub-Saharan slave trade and their many uh, pilgrimages, Hajj pilgrimage, bringing slaves to Cairo and to uh, Morocco and, and and being pushed out through the Ottoman Empire. So you're, you're, you're correct in uh, lots of uh, points. It is the, uh, it will be the black Christians that will uh, always do the death blow to any emergence uh, ideas uh, in their uh, constructs of, uh, uh, of of pushing um, pushing um, this uh, fake uh, uh, religion that they call uh, Christianity. So I just if you want to push back, push back. Yeah, I mean, because Egypt is and you know, probably comedic religion is the bad guy in the Bible. So you know, African Americans or your know, general uh, people Africans have been led to believe and, and you know you could possibly argue as a Christian that it was paganism that caused their downfall and the root of slavery and you know had uh, Af Africans been quicker to adopt Christianity that they wouldn't have uh, fell yeah, into slavery that, those points but the Bible if you actually read it their God uh, Yahweh or before that El uh, when you, we don't have to have this argument I'm saying we've had the I was making the, the, it's actually it's actually African Americans who fear probably this uh, more than, so to say, whites, because uh, religion has, at least in American England, has uh, is on the decline. And I don't think there's such a fear from whites of Africans returning to more uh, traditional practices. It's right. probably more fear among uh, you know the 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 African American church specifically. I'm not an expert in London, but uh, you know the. Uh, the African American Church is one of the most powerful institutions in America, and at this point, uh, is probably the dominant power in the American Democratic Party, and would come to some sort of uh, internal conflict. And then, if you were going to repitch comedic religion as a universal religion, uh, you know, so to say, to make converts around the world, uh, you know, possibly in the way Freemasonry, if you want to say comedic. Uh, practices are the one of the main forces behind Freemasonry, where Freemasonry was largely uh, largely non-African. Um, but, but uh, you know, so if you're if you're trying to pitch a, ri a return of comedic culture, your biggest resistance obviously going to come from the African American uh, well, church, which is so, powerful, yeah. or you're going to pitch it to non non-Africans. But I'm agreeing. I'm not arguing with you. All I wanted to say was the fact is, if you read the the Bible, it was Yahweh or El who sent his people into Egypt. I mean, sent into Africa in general, but Egypt specifically to save those people. So, uh, so the God, if you read the text, the God of the Bible, he sent his people into Africa to survive whatever was happening. You are correct about. I'm not a proponent of comedic. Uh, I'm not a proponent of comedic religion because I don't think that, except for a few, uh, people don't know enough. So I'm not a proponent. I think uh, a lot of these people are just cult people. Um, so I don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater, but 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 most of these people are just uh, uh, actually Christian uh, um, priests. Uh, acting as if they were uh, acting as if they were African, they're doing everything that 
uh, white Christianity did. Exactly. And so... Pew, 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 shot fire. <laughs> God damn. No, 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 no. Rewind that there selector for those of you who are too slow in the pew to get what Brother Reg just said. Lord have mercy. Again, pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew. Shots fire. Oh. Let's let's even add to that because the African churches get most of the money from the African people in America and provide the least of the services to the African American people behind the economics that they get when it comes to per capita. So you know you, you you're gonna have a lot of Christians who who ah, go to the church go to the church, but most times. You don't get rich behind putting money in the church. But if I start talking about 401k or life insurance, you're going to turn the program off. You understand? So the thing is not that we have to proselytize it so much. Oh, come to the per aunt, come to the per aunt. But the per aunt needs to be available. The per aunt needs to be what it used to be. Uh, the If we talk about real priest, if we talk about really talking about him, that chair, when we talk about servants of nature, we're talking about building elected priests. That means you'd be a mortician. So that's a real job. You know what I'm saying? Him nature, you the him nature, all we're doing, we're in here, we give psychological help. So you're talking about psychologists. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's what they did. And then you would come, you would pay them money, they would pray for your ancestors, they would pray for you, and they would also make sure that certain things were taken care of for you. If you know anything about the literature behind the hymn Netra or some of the different types of priests. So when we're talking about this, we're not so much talking about that. But the issue is what you mentioned earlier. You, the Metropolitan Museum is calling African art primitive as if white people didn't learn how to speak from Africans. As if we didn't teach you how to bathe in Rome and what formally, happened. Right? Form, right. Formally, formally, formally. Right. So when you bring up those particular things, which aren't really related, well, to they the accept them. I mean, the word "primitive" is, accepts that. It just says that. Well, that just one thing four thousand years ago. And yeah, then we know what nothing, primitive means. We nothing know what primitive sense. means. But I'm, I'm saying it doesn't reject that. The even the people who called African art primitivist largely accepted that the basis of culture was African. It just said the basis of primitive culture and the basis of modern culture comes from Europe. So it's. Uh, and I don't think. The, you know, the primitivist expression though, didn't reject that culture arose from Africa. Right, right. But, dude, but that wouldn't be true because, you know, the first places you see art on ancient Egyptian walls, ancient Nahesi walls, ancient African walls. So we know where real art begins. The issue is when cultures demonize another culture to make it seem like this culture is not prolific, it's not attractive. You understand? So when they did that, because we know America started on racist means and bounds, we understood what they were doing. We understood we didn't want to be here at that time anyway. We came over as captives. We understood when uh, the slave masters got paid reparations and we still can't get it today, right? So we know exactly what they meant by primitive and being disrespectful at the time. It's just a shame that it took the 2000 for them to correct their ways. What I'm saying is this, when it comes to the spirituality and who you should have on your wall, it should resemble something African, if you're African. Because until you start to see race as a social construct, we've got to deal with our race, right? And we've apologized enough. Black people don't need to apologize no more. Other cultures need to apologize for what they've done to our culture and the way they benefited from our culture. If they don't do that, we're just proposing this. Take this off your wall. Stop doing that. Come over here. Do this. Spend with this, this, that, the other, so we can go strong. And once we all grow strong, then we can see each other as equals once again. It'll be like some of the Greeks used to quote, when the pagans were in control, it was the most peaceful time on earth. Remember, we never had a problem with guys like Origen or your man um, Arian when they came over and they wanted to bring Christianity in. We said, you could do that. But we're not just going to worship Jesus. That's where the split came in with ancient Africa and ancient Europe. 
We understand that when the Romans got in control, they were taking uh, black Christians as well as white Christians and dragging them off the stairs, et cetera, et cetera, till Christianity became popular, et cetera, et cetera. So we know exactly what the history looks like. But if you don't want to repeat this, the same rhetoric from the past, it's time to change your future. And you change your future by looking at your past and knowing where to go. It's time to go in this direction again. Even right. if it's so, true, it's applicable what, to all people, though. You know, so if comedic religion what, is just your heritage and you want your aunt, your children and your people to know the rituals that uh, their ancestors used to do and it should be meaningful to them. Uh, but if it's true, it should be universal and applicable to everybody. It is. You know where you got Zeus from, right? What did right, Plutarch that, tell that. you? What did Plutarch tell you? Revival, you know, so if you're saying that we should revive Zeus, like you know, Richard Spencer and Mark Brahman, uh, pushing from the white direction to abolish Christianity and return to Apollo or something like that. If that's something like you would say, you would support that, have. that European should return to Apollo and recognize its African origins. Absolutely. And why not? Because this is the issue right here. Right. And, and we can look, we, we, we go, we don't even have to go very far because we have the Aristeus letters, don't we? It says in that letter, first we start with Plutarch. Plutarch says, Amun, who, oh, he says, Zeus, who is the same as Amun, who you refer to as the universe. You go to the Aristeus letters, it says, Ptolemy's telling the uh, Jews, he's telling your people, in particular, Brother Duvid, he says, you who are Jewish, who worship Yahweh, who is the same as Zeus, who is the universe, right? So it says that in there. And then, um, what is it? Your uh, What's the name of uh, 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 your book? It's on Sophia, or not Sophiatopia.org. It's on uh, Seferia. It's uh, the, the Talmud, I believe. It says it right in the Talmud. Yeah, Tom, the rabbinic literature. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, the he translation. brought the seven, Yeah, you know, he brought the 72 scholars over so that he could put you, you guys could talk separately because you didn't know Hebrew at the time. Remember, the Egyptian brother had to talk to them and teach them the Hebrew literature. Mm -hmm as they put the laws together that they remembered from the Greek. So at that time, you recognize Zeus. So we're not saying you have to abolish Christianity because, like I said, the remetch, the teardrops are raw. They never made you step away from that point in the first place. But what we're saying is, while we're doing this, if you want to come over, you can come over. Like but nervous. you got to recognize yeah, what's happened to our people and understand why we're moving in this direction. Okay. Well, are you saying you that, on, is there really a the, movement? Him, and because the church is the most powerful organization in uh, the African-American culture that uh, I mean, I, 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 this Actually, stuff interests me, but uh, you say like, no, I, mean, I don't see that uh, here that uh, the church basically controls the, the African-American church controls the Democratic Party in who uh, reaches power in the government handouts uh, that uh, it, it doesn't, I mean, like from scholars, from uh, you know, people interested, even in Africa, like, you know, is, is it really rising besides yeah. that? A absolutely. Okay. Climate. I mean, it, it would be like Hold this. On. I saw, I saw. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hold on one second, one second, one second. Before we even go into that, yeah, because, you know, the brother do it, uh, would actually brought something up. And I just want to know, I just want to see what the consensus or the feeling is. Personally, I don't like the term uh, comedic religion. Um, and I, 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 it's really a misnomer, full stop anyway. But let's just say, let's, 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 let's roll with, you know, the comedic philosophy and the institutions, uh, you know, putting certain institutions in place to bring about uh, that comedic culture. Is that something that should be done and is being done? And how do we, um, as he said, proselyze or propagate this particular um, ideology. You so asking I'm asking, yeah. yeah, I'm asking everybody on the panel, actually, who who, who adheres to commoditism in, in some shape or form. I'm going to let some other people talk first. We'll go ahead. Um, okay. uh, so what, what initially prompted me to want to join the panel was a point that has now already been made, yeah, which is in, in, in respect of the fact that... Um, the spiritual systems that we see in the Nile Valley, uh, and I'm saying just the Nile Valley, taken into consideration Brother Reggie's point, in the sense of not just focusing exclusively on Kemet, yeah? Th these are um, African spiritual systems or philosophies, yeah? And so I think essentially, 
we need to understand uh, what we see in the Nile Valley and Kemet in particular as a part of the complete, yeah, um, African philosophical matrix, uh, so to speak. And instead of, which a lot of people do in and outside of Kemet II philosophy or traditions, Put treating Kemet as though it's an outlier, something separate and distinct from the rest of African culture. Yeah, we can only truly appreciate Kemet and the Nile Valley when we understand African cultures in general. Yeah, because in, to to a significant degree, historically speaking, what we see in the Nile Valley is a is is drawing on and developing on and evolving what the Nile Valley inherited from uh, cultures, you know what I'm saying, that pre-existed it, yeah? And helped to evolve it coming from the, the, the rest of the, um, of the, of the continent and, and peoples that were of the continent in general. So yeah, I do believe that it's necessary in as much as Kemet um, and the Nile Valley helps us to situate a particular early development, yeah? It's considered among African centered scholars to be the classical civilization, all right? And so, in as much as Kemet and the Nile Valley helps us to center um, and provide a foundation for understanding um, indigenous African philosophy, spiritual philosophies in general, I think it's very important, extremely important that, that we do so. And, and, I, and I do agree with Brother Reggie that we need to do so from uh, beginning with a pre-dynastic understanding, um, and 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 because we, because the spiritual systems evolved and developed with the social and political realities of the people, we should understand it as a complete whole. So this, the the religion, so to speak, is not distinct from the history, is not distinct from the philosophy, is not distinct from the economics, etc., etc., etc. Right. Anybody else? Um that is part of the comedic tradition in some shape or form, anyone? Okay, should I add my two yeah, cents? Yeah, I'm or sorry, I had to take a call. So I think, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the last uh, comment, um, the last speaker, uh, I think is Shakara, who's speaking yes, is absolutely, uh, it was absolutely bright, brilliant. The, the we, we, we get into a problem if, if it's just the resurgence of what they call kinetic. I think we need to throw that out with the bathwater. Uh, I think that the, the, it's, it's a, the real critical issue should always be African belief systems, right? And, and, and then uh, 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 Kemet, that time period is just one. But there's a whole, but African belief system is interconnected. And it's more unifying because we find ourselves coming from Western Central Africa, coming here. We don't find ourselves directly coming from Kemet, even though that there was some uh, culture from that moved down the Wadi Hawar, the Yellow Nile, into uh, uh, Chad and into that area before Islam. So we make this mistake of trying to pick one over other uh, a broad the better broad is now valley uh, uh belief systems right uh and it's con culture uh, it's, con uh, it's continuity then to just to get into this thing of this uh this chemist stuff right where i know listen i, I would have no argument with a saw and i really wouldn't have any argument with uh Sankofa. It, it, it became that it became that belief system. It was something before that, and it's something before that. I'll stop. The, the The major point of it is is that African belief systems are, is something that uh, should be uh, propagated rather than choosing some. I don't want to be mean, so I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you didn't know, Saber Reggie is not religious in this format yeah. at all. You understand? I think, I think, I think that's been said in the chat a number of times. So, what I will contribute is this um, he's correct. 
you have to remember and and ancient uh when you say ancient Kemet or let's call it something else if you talk about ancient uh Tamari it never had an issue with other religions right. with other spirituality systems remember whites would pay money to get their religious systems from ancient Kemet there's a tax record for Zeus and et cetera, et cetera. And the, and the Greeks will tell you that. The Romans came over and copied too. The Persians came over. Darius the first, he was over there copying too. Remember, it's in the, uh, I want to say it's the Ebers papyrus or the other medical papyrus. Black people showing you how to be a doctor. You don't learn things with without us starting that for you. So that's historical record. It's, it's without question. And all you got to do, I think it's in the Ebers papyrus. He says, his majesty Darius, blah, 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 blah. And then he called them some barbarians. And then he said, I will do this for you. Teach them to be doctors amongst his particular culture. And he picked the uh, families of esteem and economics to do it. If you help me restore the per onx. So all we're doing right now is the exact same thing. I think it's Ehi or... Assessi might have been. Um, he he did that. He told Darius what the deal was, and that's what he did in order to bring restoration back to ancient Egypt at the time. But you could be Ifa, you could be a Khan. All of those are derivatives from the original. You could be Vudan. We don't have a problem with that. The problem is you're worshiping other cultures' gods, and it's making decadence out of your family and your home. You're making good gang members. You're not making what you used to make. And it's because you don't see yourself in the position of God. You don't see yourself in the position of greatness. But when the ether goes away from the earth and the sun stops shining on this side of the planet, the whole sky is black. And you forget that. You forget that your den was sick in the, in the northern sky we called the ancestors. And so you've replaced white with a place of spirituality and death with black being a place of spirituality and death and so you forget who you are so we have to remind you remember who you are and be in a saw so you can get up off your hiney and start getting it together again it's simple as that so when we look at and we say stuff like oh christianity's running this but you turned around and said atheism is rising in europe but europe is still mostly christian and so that's the same thing with any movement. It's always going to start small. But when it starts to go downhill, it starts to pick up steam. And that's all it needs to do right now. We need to start to push on it. It'll roll and it'll become a mass. As simple as that. All right. All right. Let me chime in now. Woo. Woo. Jeez. Okay. Comedic philosophy, religion, systems, institutions. Let me see. Brother Reggie actually made something made mention about um you know African belief systems and obviously he's non-religious and so forth. I think personally, yeah. Personally, because you know Callum already, yeah, he has atheistic tendencies. I think every <laughs> ah, it's real, you know, it's so real. I think every single belief system, yeah, whether it is African, Asian, European, or whatever the case is, is detrimental to human society. Okay. And I don't think that comedic philosophy um, leaned on beliefs, okay? I, as far as I know, it is a philosophy, natural philosophy and science that created a civilization, okay? So I would say, first and foremost, we have to get rid of the isfet, and the isfet to me is the belief systems. And if you really want this to pop off into being something, is actually um, you know create institutions. The uh, good brother Asar M. Car talked about the per unk. Um, brother, what exactly is the per unk, right? Yes. And how could we institutionalize a per unk? You know, a per unk is a is a house of learning. Um, there's a few things we read in the liter. A lot of things actually we read in the literature. Uh, at one time it was a hospital. Uh, the outer portion of it uh, seems to be a place of worship. The inner portion of it seems to be a place where uh, the different types of priests would get together. Um, they would choose certain families uh, to do certain things 
in ancient Kemet, right? So elector priests or what you would call a mortician, those were certain families and they were designated to do that for the community. You know, uh, you, if you were a doctor, a Sanu, there were certain people who were chosen to be Sanus. You would do that for the family. There's certain people who were chose to be scribes, um, certain people who were chose to be astrologists, which is your original astronomer. So there's certain job titles that the community would start to be assigned through the per -onk. Um, You would also find uh, the worship of the Neturu there, done mostly by the priests. Uh, praise to your ancestors was done at home, but it was also done in the per -onk by the priests. And it was also a hospital. So there's several different things that the per uh interacted as. Um, and it's almost like a universal house for, for most things in a culture. It's something we may need to bring back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's something that oh, yeah. it sounds very viable. If you can imagine a hospital, uh, your church, if you will, um, doctors and, you know, all types of stuff there. Uh, that that sounds like a useful type building that we can put back into existence without question. And you don't need authorities to do that. You just need know how and put it in put it in place. Okay. So yeah. Um. So like, let's see. So first of all, I think you know it seems as though we need to have parangs and other institutions that actually make up a temple uh, system. And the temple systems weren't you know as we have temples today being religious. They were actual social political. Um, it was a social political institution. It was literally the government. Yeah, exactly. that's what it was. I would, I would, I would agree. At this, at the same time, I would, I would also suggest that they were all replete with ritual, right? Of course, of course. Uh, right. So, so in in, in that, and, I, and I'm only highlighting that because when we begin to talk about religion, people associate that or spiritual systems or whatever. People mm -hmm. associate that with ritual in general. And then what mm -hmm. comes into question is, well, what is the worth or the value? Or what purpose does the ritual play? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and so we have to situate then if it it is indeed the case that we need to uh, minimize this this level of belief and accentuate more knowledge based ideals. Then what purpose does ritual play uh, in that in such an endeavor? Yeah, and I would suggest that the purpose of ritual is to synchronize the consciousness and emphasize the primary principles and values of the social order, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and to make it real in the lives of the people. So we're not just studying Ma'at in a textbook where we, 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 are, we, are, we are given expression to Ma'at, yeah? Through how we dance, yeah? Through the words that we're saying, through how we sing and so on and so forth. And, and this is how we engender that within ourselves, in our children, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. Correct. Correct for that. And we can see so, this scientifically through monks, right? Because they can use more of their brain than you through belief. <laughs> and when you believe in something heavily, like you have to understand, most of you have been told the story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is above. And when you die, you're going to go to Jannah. Most of you have been told the story. Jesus is waiting in heaven for you. Blah, 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 blah. This, that, the other. And he's coming back. You, Some of you have been told in Jew, Jewish, Jewish uh, uh, religious is a little bit different. But you still think Yahweh. You still think that you'll be in a higher heaven than the Gentiles. You still think you're, you know, you think you're chosen and you think you're special. You really do. So I, I want to do a quick, like, um, you know, there's just a quick kind of uh, mental, yeah, psychological, uh, you know, a mind, what do we call it? A mind game, but not a mind game. What do you call it? Just just to have like a, a thought in the air. Okay. Okay. This, this is based off Duvid, you know, Duvid and Duvid, you could chime in as well, right? I want to know, okay. If you are one person, just I just need one person, yeah, just one person, you are filled with comedic knowledge and wisdom and philosophy and so forth, right? How do you, in your one vicinity, in your one local town, how would you transform yourself, your one self, from a one to a two to a three to a thousand? And if you can do that, transform yourself. 
i.e. spread this comedic stuff where you have that amount of following and amount of practitioners and people who are schooled and so forth. If you can do it, I will give you 10 million pounds if you could do that in one year. What would you do and how could you make that a reality? Because it seems as though, right, most of us here, we have this information, right, but we're not very active. But I'm sure if I said I can give you 10 million pounds here within the space of a year, if you can make this come true, right, I'm sure we can do it, right? So I want to know, like, what plans? And we're just we're just doing a thought experiment. This is a thought experiment. What could we do? And I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it to Duvid. Duvid, if I promised you ten million in one year to bring comedic philosophy and practices into fruition, yeah, how would you come by it? How would you do it? Well, I'm I'm not sure that would work like that because if it's true, so to say, because it's representative of reality, then you could then it should work you know like if it's a like a system like prayers mantras beliefs and when you align yourself with proper belief and action life becomes successful because uh the creator of the whole world ordained it and so if you're making that claim as a priest that that uh, you know some sort of divine connection and you're giving divine wisdom to people and they could test it out on their own uh, because it works you know you can have like mantras and prayers and rituals and revive uh you know, even deity worship uh i think you know people reasonably expect that it should work and uh you know so like you you know saying that you're going to pay them or something but but uh you know, reasonably if someone's going to ascribe themselves to the system it seems uh reasonable they should expect it to work and uh for that it has to be so to say true mm -hmm. Because the problem I see, right, because most people have this information, but they're not being, as other religious folks are, go out and proselytize, go out and try to build converts, right? It seems that most comedic people just hold it onto what they have to themselves and share it with those close to, the, to, to, to them, but not actually try to spread it. So I want to know, like, what can we do to actually spread it if that's what we wanted to do? Well, I say it has to work. That's why you can, you can't. There's nothing you can do to spread it, except it working. If it works, it'll spread. If it doesn't work, it won't spread. Well, the first thing you got to do is create jobs. So when you have jobs that are independent of other cultures, uh, not saying black, white, but Christian, Islamic, this, that, the other, <clears throat> when you can create jobs, things work. It's really that simple. And once you start to create jobs. People start to prescribe to your to your medication. If you can't prescribe jobs, if you can't feed the people, if you can't make moves on the people's behalf, you won't have any movement. You understand? Most people, you have to understand how most institutions work. Most of these institutions in America are Christian based. And if you don't prescribe to that Christian base, whether you go to CU, CSU or Harvard, um, when you get to a job, you don't necessarily get the promotion you want. That's how it's set up here in America, through the college system. So if you're in a higher up position and you didn't create the job, you can't really make moves to anybody at the job. Now, in an Islamic country, guess what? <laughs> if you're not a sheikh, if you're not an imam, if you're not, you're not in power. If you don't have any power and you're not close to King Fahad or so and so, and you don't have any, you don't have a method to get to the top, do you? So you just end up being on the bottom, and that's how it that's how it is in society. the The only issue is that Africans don't trade with themselves. We don't have any means to uh to uh to we do have the means but we don't use them we don't go over to create business with each other and bring it back over here and make it a viable business because you have all the resources in that continent and you make no moves over in that continent or any moves over in that that's your issue uh, i want to add i just want to add to that puzzle the whole purpose of uh religion or spirituality was for unification That's right. uh, and and so if the religion or spirituality cannot unify the people then um it's the people and their unification that is action 
in American societies to buy lobbying is by votes, right? It's simple as that. That's the magic. The magic is unity. Uh, for ancient uh, Nile Valley, when the Kemet was unified, what they call Smaitawi. Well, sorry, I did it myself. When the <laughs> when the country was unified, the two lands were unified, not Kemet, but it was Smaitawi, right? When it was reunified later under uh, with Mentehotep, um, it was called Kemet. All of these are unifications. Religion only works when um, when there's an organized body that can unify to do some real action, not goddamn magic, right? So, yep. <laughs> so, so your your prayers have to your 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 prayers have to work in the form of getting your neighbor and your other group of people to to get into a common plan. That's prayer. Prayers when is a communal type of activity. We our uh, the problem with our movement is that we have all of these charlatan religious leaders who, in a sense, is really about their own personal goddamn wealth, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and, and it's about their ego. And it's about, and but most of these, uh, and unfortunately, the, the, the Kemet group at large is a non-active political group. They don't do anything political. So their prayers ain't gonna goddamn work, right? Because they ain't doing shit. They're not. They're not on the front line. They're not in the rallies. They are separate, observing, and and it's just not them. It's other groups that do that too. But I'm only specifically talking about prayer. Only prayer is when uh, a community of people decide to actually do something and put their thoughts into actions. So um, the rest of it is uh, again. I am going to go back to these um, to these charlatan priests who who are not doing anything. I mean, I'm comedic priest, and and it's not and, and, and not all of them. Listen, I I um, look, Brother <laughs> Jabari is is a friend of mine. I'm really not talking about Brother Jabari because I could talk to him. I'm just talking about. Okay. In general, I'm not talking about Brother Jabari because I, I because he's a friend of mine and I can talk to him. We can have a we can have a discourse and a debate, and I debate him often. I've been debating him for twenty something years, right? <laughs> but outside of Jabari, who I think is a and his wife, who I think are people of great character, I am talking about a whole slew of other groups of people who they don't do nothing in a in a, in a black community. They don't do nothing. They act like Christians. If something happened wrong to you, is because you wasn't following Mott. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, right. that last statement is an interesting one. I, I wanna, I'm going to come back to you, but um, my, mm. my contribution was going to be similar to what Brother Reggie said. The way to do it is to connect mm. to the social, political, and economic realities of the people. And that mm -hmm. is inherently my art, my attic, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, my art doesn't yeah. exist separate from social, social. In fact, let me let me let me do this now because I was going to do this before. But if I may, brother Kalan, yeah, um, in, in, there's a book called Companion to African Philosophy, and in it, Baba Tia Fila Benga has mm -hmm. a, a chapter on uh, Kemetu philosophy. Yeah, and he breaks down ma'at, beginning with a linguistic understanding, su say, suggesting that it comes from a root word which is ma. Yeah, and so he begins to talk, talk about the word, the, the term ma'at, and what the deity ma'at represents by looking at the root word. And so I, I'll read um, from there. He says ma, the root word, basically means the real reality that is that which is genuine and authentic as opposed to artificial or spurious. Ma'at is reality as a whole. That is the totality of all things, possessing actuality, existence, or essence. Ma'at is that which exists objectively. In fact, ma'at is that which has necessary and not just contingent existence. This is why ma'at is everywhere and pervades all creation. Er, jer. It means also that ma'at is pertinent to all spheres of reality, the divine or sacred, the cosmic, the physical, the political, 
and the familial. In short, ma'at is an exhaustive uh, and comprehensive concept. This inclusiveness makes it an orderly and aesthetically coherent whole, which is why ma'at also means orderliness and the totality of existence. Accordingly, everything in the universe that is real and orderly is in so it is the expression or manifestation of ma'at. I'll read us a little bit more. In particular, when in society, human beings conduct themselves in proper, in the proper way or perform in the correct way, they are manifesting ma'at. Hence, these other meanings of ma'at, truth, justice, righteousness, rightness. Ma'at is the highest conception of physical and moral law known to the ancient Egyptians. Thus, it is that the goddess Ma'at was the personification. Thus, it is that the goddess Ma'at was the personification of law, order, rule, truth, right, righteousness, canon, justice, straightforwardness, integrity, uprightness, conscientiousness, and perfection. Egyptian civilization was built upon this very inclusive concept with its great fecundity of meaning. However, the talk of ma'at is of no use if it is not practiced. In truth, ma'at is a way of life and spirituality. And so this is exemplified or given expression in the various different ways that ma'at is used when you look at Kemetu literature, yes, or now valley literature, yeah? So you will see ma'at in the in the, in the Pertem Heru, the book of coming forth by day. To declare yourself ma'at keru, you have to have proven yourself to have abided by ma'at, yeah? When there are lamentations in Kemet and people are vexed in the social order gone, they're vexed because ma'at is not the current order of the day. And so they're calling for the restoration <laughs> of ma'at. In, in the book of Kun Anup, yeah, where the, the or what they call the eloquent peasant, where he's ad advocating on his own behalf towards um, the Nasut, yeah? He, his advocacy is done in the name of ma'at and he's asking the, the officials who are in positions of authority to act in accordance with Ma'at in relation to himself, all right? And so there is no distinction here between the political, the social, the economic, and so on and so forth. So we have to understand it in that context. And then philosophically or culturally speaking, we have to understand what Ma'at is in different African cultures. So we can relate Ma'at, yeah, or the concept of Ma'at to Iwapele in the, 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 the Yoruba, tradition. We can relate the concept of Ma'at to Kalunga in the Kikongo uh, tradition and, and so on and so forth. And then we understand that we're coming from uh, a shared philosophical conception that is expressed in varying different languages and begin to implement that understanding through our institution building. And I want to, that's, that's incredible. Right? You deserve a, a round of applause. I just want to do this right here yeah, because, you know, Brother David uh, brings up this point and I want to just, you know, kind of just sidetrack on this real quickly. So I want to know, like, you know, um, for those of us who, you know, you know, purport this comedic, yeah, again, it's, it's a lack of a better word, right? I want to know, what exactly does it have to offer? What does comedic philosophy, spirituality, science, religion, whatever the name you want to choose to call it, what does it have to offer? And what solutions does it have for the world's problems? It will definitely re psychologically, and that's a good question, psychologically connect you back to uh, what you need to be connected to, which is nature. You're running out of resources at a, a high pace. So, uh, you know, you find countries at war with each other. You know, you always talk about black on black crime. Right now, you got Ukraine and Russia beefing because Russia wants Ukraine's resources. And really, they can just borrow and do trade with them. But why do that when it used to be a part of Russia? There's beef, right? So there's a lot of things that my my aunt can put you back online with that uh, other these other religions they they don't offer, and you see it. The, the Crusaders went out to conquer, right? Uh, uh, Islam, jihad, you go out to conquer, right? One thing that my aunt never did. We would go out to get a resource, but we would never occupy your land. We say, you can live how you want. We just need this from you. Give it to us, please, on a regular basis. And people would usually say, yeah, that's fine. And that's why when they, they when the statement is made 
during the pagan times, there was more peace than any other time on earth. It's because we weren't hell bent on occupying your land to die outside of Kemet was an issue for an ancient Ramech. You understand what I'm saying? So Ma'at will realign you, number one, with nature, number two, with being brotherly so that you can start to, you know, coincide with each other as other cultures without an issue. You know, my God, you're not going to heaven if you don't worship like this. Child, please, you, your religion is Johnny come lately. It wasn't even created at the beginning times of people. Number, please, number, please look number three, it will start to economically align you the way that you need to be. And there are certain things that we can discuss concerning that. But that's what's most important. Right now, there's issue with resources. There's issue with water. There's issue with my I put you back in a line with nature. And it's in the text. And you'll see it when you read the text. It is going to be very clear. All right. Peace, Yo, peace, peace. Yeah. Peace. Uh, you can hear me, yeah? Peace, I didn't Heru. even know it was you, you know. All this time I see Heru, Heru, I just skipped my mind. What's yes. This? I was just chilling. So I didn't really want to come on some and cause some controversial stuff mm -hmm. going on. Uh, David, I'm surprised that you showed your face. But, you know, it's not my platform. It's Titans. I see you said in comments in... Um, Damn. The chat there. Do you do you actually think that the the, the Egyptians are pagans? Why well, I was saying definitionally all non Abrahamic uh, traditions are, are basically considered pagan. That uh, I mean, oh, okay. The, we had this discussion. We had to, we hold on there. Hold on. I've been sitting patiently waiting. We've had this discussion offline, correct? Well, I don't know if we discussed the the definition. You know, you know who I am. You know, you know, offline, you know. But, yeah, yeah, right. You know who I am, but now you're live. You're live. So because your God is superior to every other else's God, and we have to follow your religion to be accepted into heaven, tell this panel for me. Answer the question that you didn't want to answer. Is your God corporeal or incorporeal? Why don't we want to veer the subject to a, you, the Abrahamic God uh, but I mean, clearly, the Abrahamic tradition wants to unify all of mankind. I didn't. I didn't answer that. I'm, I, I didn't ask you that. I didn't ask you that. Is your God Jehovah? Is he corporeal or incorporeal? I mean, generally, the understanding is no. It's incorporeal that uh, when we discuss. He's, it, he's, I, he's incorporeal, right? Are you saying he's incorporeal or corporeal? Why, Simple the, question. The general consensus among rabbinic scholars. That what? That God is incorporeal with no form, out of uh, uh, impersonal, out of space, out of time. Right. So it. now we go to your book that you said is your primary source. Who came to Abraham in a corporeal form? Who was it? Well, the Bible mentions uh, the angel Gabriel. No. No. You're lying now. And you lied before and you're lying again. This is Titans TV. I told you this before. You can have your, all your philosophical bull going on, but I'm here from my friend. Who came to Abraham at the tent door? Who was it? The three angels. I'm out of you. This like top Why did, do, you, Bible do you want us to go? Do you want us to go over this again? Wasn't it uh, Yahweh that came to him? Wasn't it Yahweh that stand at the tent door? I wasn't here to preach to you guys, Yahweh. I mean, if you want to attack, uh, no, 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 no. You're not here, here to preach. You're culture. here to. You're well, not well, here well, to well, preach. Well, but well, you're well. throwing. You're throwing. You're throwing your things in the comment as if to say your ancestors were pagans. Yeah. I see you. Well, that's in the English mean. language, you're saying that's definitionally that's true. That's just the, that's just translation of the word. Thank you. Now let me uh, let me question your religion. Because we're speaking the English language, we're not speaking the language of your ancestors, we're speaking the language of the people who defeated your ancestors. And that's the point I'm making. Definitely, your ancestors were pagan, and that's why we're speaking the language of the people who defeated our ancestors. If you want to revive the Kemetic tradition, 
You have to explain Sakara, how foreigners defeated your ancestors. No, but I don't, I, no, no, Sakara, you, listen, okay, you respect I, your I ancestors, but you're saying your ancestors yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, listen, and they listen, are listen. speaking the language of Love the people it. who Love defeated it. your ancestors. I was doing this the other night. So let me just be clear. You haven't answered my question. In your primary source book that you told me and the medicine man was your primary source, who came to Abraham in a corporeal form? Was it God? Yes or no? I don't know if Clam, if you want to have this uh, biblical argument, uh, you know, like pull out verses and argue. It's about a simple the... question. It's a simple question, my friend. You are the one with the books behind you. It's your book. Who came to Abraham at the tent door? Was it not God? Well, the, the three Bible angels? says Adonai. Doesn't it say Adonai? Doesn't it say that in your language? I mean, you have to pull out the verse if you want to pull out the verse. And Jesus Christ, we've done you. this the other night. What do you mean? We, we went through this the other night. It was God. Everybody knows it was God. He sat and ate food with Abraham. That's why I'm I know not, you're, a you, you're, you're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. I don't even know like, why you're on this panel. Why you're on this panel? Why? I mean, why I mentioned just, that, spread your, that just spread primitive, your primitive book. Primitive studies. That it was classified. We're talking you can't English. Answer a simple question. This is definition of how Hebrew. the words are defined in the English you language. You don't even know Hebrew. You don't even know Hebrew. I can't even talk to you about your own language. Just like our ancestors were defeated by the Brits, and that's why we're talking their language. No, listen, I don't care what your ancestors were defeated by. Your, so your story, too, why your are story, are we, why are we your story, to each other your in the story, language? your Jewish why are we, why are you story has interacted, to language your Jewish to the story language of your has interacted with African stories, and you have corrupted our story. Why are you so now, I'm the holding you as accountable. The language of your ancestors. My friend, you're just you're on here talking. Why are you rubbish using this language as opposed rubbish. to the language? I'm not wasting my time with you. I'm done with you the other night. I'm afraid that you showed your face again. Step off with your lies. You're a liar. You're not honest. You're up here talking about truth and full of truth. You're not truth. You can't even answer a simple question. Everyone know God came to Abraham. He was the one in the burning bush. Your God is corporeal. He eats. He drinks. He sleeps. Is that Moses. the God you're the burning bush is Moses, not Abraham. Get, get out of here, my friend. Like, I, mean, I wasn't here to preach test, Abraham, back, I was back, here to back, talk back, about the back, revival all of comedic tradition. All, and, and all done, all done. It's just definitional that it's... Chai, oh my God. Jesus Christ, I went away for a hot second. All right, this is a family tree, yeah? I'm literally um, closing down the show in the next eight minutes, right? Eight minutes. We've got on far too long. I was supposed to do a second show today at 7 p.m. Uh, with the brother Raf. Uh, going through something to do with Islam, something to do with Quran, Jews, that was it, Jews, no Jews, no Christians, that was it, the Christians that got burnt in Himyar, no, got burnt in Najran, the Himyarite books, what was going on there, and so forth, right, but I don't even think I'm going to even have time to do that today, because I'm trying to enjoy life, I haven't even eaten anything yet, so, um, family tree, we're going to continue the show, um, for the next seven minutes now, and yeah, like, yeah, Let, let's 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 bring down the temperature. Let's bring it down a little bit still, because we only got a few more minutes left. All right, um, where were we? Where were we? What Can I give my minutes? closing arguments? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I believe that many people with this uh, new faith, uh, uh, believing in ancient uh, Tawi civilization, is misappropriating. Uh, Maad. They do not understand what Maad is. I think Shaka Ray made a great statement. Um, you can't separate Maad from economics, politics, and culture. What it would look like in a modern form would be something equivalent to uh, uh, socialism, uh, which those constructs uh, derived from earlier thoughts, but it is a thesis antithesis uh, uh, formation of chaos and justice, and 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 so African people need to be defeating uh, chaos with justice, and the only way they can do that is to organize and not pray and not do ceremonies and and things like that, 
only if you do ceremonies is to strengthen your fight against injustice, but not to just do it just to make it make you freaking feel good. My closing arguments. All right, I saw. Come with, come with some fire, G. Come with some heat. <laughs> um, hmm. like I said initially, uh, and it was piggybacked off of excellently. Um, economics will bring people to your game. Um, if you can't build economics with the maat you have, you may not be worth the money. You know, you may not be worth the nickel. You may not be worth the penny. Um, all the people that I've dealt with that I, you know, teach maat. Uh, too, and and teach the Shemsu Asar lifestyle too. All of them are economically sound, so they listen. You know, and it's not just about economics. Uh, it's also about respecting your ancestors, respecting your cultural ties, respecting where you came from. When you can see yourself in the position of God, you can become a God, and that's important that you are God in your life. Because if you think that a God speaks through you. You need to understand how to speak and you can't speak when you're always in a desperate situation. You can't speak intelligibly. And so that becomes an issue. And when people try to demonize your culture uh, just because they're on top now, they haven't even been on top for over 500 years. Most of these characters, right? Some of them just at a thousand years. Your ancient culture stretched much longer than that. <laughs> so, you know, Never look down on your culture. You know, they call it primitive. They call it whatever they may try to call it. But remember, they were the ones in the cave. And now they're coming to the light based off of information you gave them. So now it's time that, you know, we reassess who we are. Remember, you're in a saw and start to get back to that light. Start to get in the direction that uh, will make you successful. You know, we judge success off of what? How you doing economically? How you doing spiritually? How your soul is? But some of these cats don't even believe you have a soul. So, like I said, economics, <laughs> economics will prove your point because then you can create the universe around you the way you want it to look. Very simple. And it's something I've been doing for a while. And that's that. Anything else is, you know. It's, it's, it's okay to subscribe to your culture because it's okay to be Ifa. So it better be okay to be a Shemsu Haru. It's okay to be a Hebrew. It's okay to be something, a, a Muslim or something that destroyed your culture or sold you into slavery. So it better be okay to be a Shemsu Asar, a Shemsu Haru, a Shemsu Set, etc., etc. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know. Have we had... All right, I want to say this, actually. I want to say this. I think, uh, secretly, it's actually time that we actually institute a virtual per -unk. A virtual per -unk. Whether it's here on Titans TV, whether it's on a Sarm Cars channel, or somewhere else, we need a virtual per -unk so we can start to institutionalize our political, social, our social political, and economic um uh, how can i put it i don't want to say revival i don't want to say revolution i want to say growth that's what i want to say all right so can we do that family tree can we do it and would you guys tune in that's the question i'm leaving open-ended for everybody else to answer uh who hasn't had a, a closing word uh and please let's keep it on this topic for the closing words you know what like i said i've, I've got a whole different view as far as I'm concerned, we can talk economics, we can talk this, we can talk that. If mm -hmm. you don't have an army, if you don't have an army, you might as well forget everything. It's like we all seen Black Wall Street. Mm -hmm. They were doing exactly what we want to do. But what happened? Somebody saw that they had something and they just went in and take it. Mm -hmm. So we can talk all on my act, spirituality, this and that. The only thing black people don't want to talk about is forming an army because you've been in a war for nearly 2000 years. I've got evidence of that. I can bring up reviews after reviews after reviews of people trying to poison you, kill you, shoot your kids. And all we talk about is, well, we have to build up economics. Where's the army? 
Mm -hmm. There's the army. How did people walk in and take your shit? Because you didn't have an army. America doesn't fight with Russia because it's going to break out because Russia's got an army. That's the only way you're going to get respect. After that, you can talk about my act. Um, to, to follow that up, I would, I would argue that um, the, the lack of an army is probably indicative of a lack of my art <laughs> rather than the presence of it or conversations about it. The, the go in, go in, go in. Yeah, the point I'm making is that if we if we properly understood my art, it would direct, well, to the extent that my art provides direction conceptually, it would direct the actions of a military, yeah? Um, and it would inspire us to, to uh, rise up in defense um, of um, who we are and what is ours, yeah? That would be considered uh, an act of the restoration of my art. I think Brother Kalam spoke earlier in the show um, near the beginning about Isfit, yeah, uh, and doing away with Isfit. Well, if we need to rise a military to do away with Isfit, then that's what we need to do. But the point is that armies are based, are risen based upon shared uh, collective values and principles, right? And so if we don't have the collective values and principles um, in, embodied in a people to know what exactly we are fighting for, then we will not have an army. Um, to that effect. So I, I, I will answer the question uh, by, by praying on the wisdom of my brother, I believe it was Asa, who you mentioned earlier about the nature-based uh, foundation of Kemetu cosmology, yeah? And this is something that I would extend to African cosmology in general. So there is no individual book, yeah, that claims to sum up the totality of the universe uh, and and uh, all that needs to be known about it, yeah? This would be considered an arrogant claim, yeah, within uh, indigenous African philosophy, that we connect our, our uh, concepts of the self, our concepts of politics, economics, and social development to our understanding of ourselves as a part of uh, the universe, yeah, the nature, right? as expressions of nature. That's what ma'at is, to use a different terminology. That's what Ubuntu is, yeah, in oh. other languages um, uh, among uh, African peoples, yeah. And so, in doing that, to touch on to, to bring it together, touch on what Brother Reggie said, the purpose of the spiritual system is to unite the people. So, in this instance, I'm referring to what we call Black or African people, and I think that one of the ways that we do that is through our understanding of our culture. As Sheikh Anta Diop says, the cultural unity of Black Africa. And so our culture and our spiritual systems at the center of our culture can help us to develop uh, a unified idea of ourselves, to see the unity that maybe we're not conscious of at the moment, to bring that unity to our consciousness. And once we're going through that process, we can make it functional through our social organizations, through our political organization, through our economic institutions um, and development, yeah? And so I don't consider political organization to be separate from spiritual organization, yeah? Unless the people that are engaged in it are actively making that distinction. <laughs> um, I, I, wanna, I wanna quickly add, because I think this is really important, um, definitely to the two points. One is uh, armies come from the people, but the, the but what you need to do is you, you have cities and states, you have counties and everywhere that African people live in, take over those institutions. You automatically have an army, you automatically have taxes, you automatically have the people. The movement might, might, most likely will come probably secular, right? Secularly, right? Uh, but the fact of the matter is, once you control those uh, local governments, then you have the things that you need uh, for quality of life. Thank you so much. And I agree. Just, to, just to conclude, in the, in the process though of institutionalization, we need to be patient with ourselves and each other. At the end of the day, we are a people who have who are um, inheritors of a culture that has been severely attacked, yeah, demonized and elements of it have been subject to certain levels of destruction. And so in terms of reinstitutionalization, there will be times where we need to correct each other and evolve from one stage of development to another. And I think that we need to engage this process 
with the understanding. And with the understanding, we should spend more time on educating and building what we think is correct than destroying and or critiquing what we think is incorrect. Okay. Uh, Brother David. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You know, as I said, I'm here in Metro Detroit. Uh, you know, a black man, uh, uh, James Craig, is running for governor, and he's famous for telling people to buy guns. Uh, you know, there's probably more armed blacks in Metro Detroit than uh, than most African nation, most African armies, as opposed to New York City. Uh, the you know the uh, black mayor is trying to get guns out of the hands of blacks, and it's right. tough to know. Uh, organizational principles, you know, include uh, include the army, and uh, you know places like Detroit, where there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of blacks that are extremely well armed. Uh, if that's better than New York, where they don't want uh, people to have guns, uh, but I educate, you know, like I live in a mostly African American community. Most are Christians. I'm an educator. I think these are important. Knowing your history, knowing your culture, spirituality, uh, you know. So I, I support the conversation and learning more. And even propagating, uh, you know, some of these teachings or revived spirituality. So I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Uh, do you know what? Yeah, I'm actually going to close it down. Yeah, with a prayer <laughs> from. Why well, have that man? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a pleasure, panel. It's a pleasure. <laughs> and uh, my prayer is that of you know one of the most famous. Uh, rabbis to ever live. <laughs> the, one of the most hated and yet one of the most rabbis to ever live. And we all know this prayer. Our Father, who <laughs> <laughs> art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Did you say Howard is his name? I thought it was Jehovah. Howard is his name. Howard? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> the, the, very, the most important part of this prayer is thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And to put it more specifically, thy government come and your ordinance be done. Well, that means from a comedic standpoint is, if we want to be successful in terms of Ma'at, we must first institution have an institution which is the government and then everything else would follow. That's all. If you really want Ma'at to be successful, you need a governmental body. That's it. That's what I'm saying. That's it. And that's me. I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm finished. So, Family Tree, we're going to continue this conversation off air, right? Um, and we will expand some more, some more of this information. And if you would like to join us, yes, salute uh, to John McDermott. Um, if you would like to join us, the link is actually in the uh, comment section. If you want more shows like this, let us know in the comment section. And if you want uh, our other show that we're supposed to be doing, which is like to do with Judaism, um, Judaism, Christianity, and the Quran. No, okay, Judaism. So the whole story that happened in, in Arabia uh, with um, you know the Najashi and Abrahar and uh, Zul Nawaz and so forth. If you would like to hear that and have that information known to you, yeah, we're going to do a show on that. But let us choose. You can choose which one do you want to hear first, the Egyptian stuff, the comedic stuff, or the Quranic stuff. Let me know, Family Chi, let me know. But anyways, um, yeah, if you haven't already supported Titans TV, you know, you can super chat us down below, or you can, what's that thing called, cash app us as well, and just hit the like button, baby. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe, baby. But I'm out. Peace and love. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Don't forget to join us off air. Yeah. Oh, man. Peace.